Hello, good evening, and welcome to A Fistful of Vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Ted Bushman. You may use any of the gentlemanly pronouns with me, he, him, and such. Uh, I'm having a little bit of an echo, am I? No, I'm not. Uh, I'm the game master around these parts, and this here is a posse of survivors who make their home in the wild and unforgiving territory of Annabelle. Maybe you've heard of him. The players joining me tonight are Rebecca Munoz-Smith, Kristen Perkins, and Delaney Westfall. If you saw any of our promotion, you will notice that we are missing our friend Emily Johnson Erday. She was extremely excited to be here tonight, but fell ill and currently cannot speak. She is going to be recovering for a few days and thus will not be joining us this evening. However, she did contribute greatly to the event. She wrote the intro theme music that you heard, and she developed the character of Alice Bailey, who will be presented tonight as an NPC. If you are watching, Emily, you can let me know if I'm doing her justice. Now, friends, could you uh, perhaps introduce yourselves? Not your characters yet, but, but you. Tell us what you're doing now or what you were doing before this old plague we're experiencing started, um, where you, we can see all that cool stuff that you're up to in, uh, in your lives. Um, let's go alphabetically. Could we start with, by a uh, last name, could we start with Rebecca? Oh, I'm never first. Hi. <laughs> 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 At least okay. with last names. Um, <laughs> Hi, yeah. I'm Rebecca Munoz, uh, she, her, and I work uh, for a theme park company. I help make costumes and props, and I am also an artist and an actress here in Kansas City. I neglected to mention that Rebecca created the character art that you see uh, on the screen this evening for all of our characters who will be introduced, um, and also the, uh, the character art for Emily, Emily's character who's not pictured, but maybe we'll post somewhere. Who I knows what the future holds? I just realized that, Delaney, you look like you're being held hostage by your character. <laughs> That's true. She's holding a gun to your head. This is literally <laughs> holding a gun to your head. I'm so sorry. That's hilarious. <laughs> Unintentional. <laughs> Don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> the death of the author in a very different way. Um, all right, uh, Kristen, would you uh, tell us a bit about yourself? What you um, sure. Uh, my name's Kristen Perkins. I use she, her pronouns. I am a writer, interdisciplinary artist, and um, community organizer currently working at a small library in rural New York, which I love. Um, I think I might have a coworker watching this, so that's fun. Um, yeah, and you can find me, I guess, on Instagram if you must. Social media is, a, is the true if it play. it is required. Um, yeah, yeah. Kristen Helen Perkins. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Delaney, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, I am an actress, uh, a musical theater, and sometimes TV, and I don't know what else to say. <laughs> yeah, not, um, not a whole lot going on since the world has collapsed yes, for, very, your, very, <laughs> for your line of work. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, but uh -huh. I've we've you know we've passed the time somehow <laughs> yeah <indeed. laughs> there are games to play things to do so um yeah great and you'll notice uh, in the the information below the uh the uh window here where you're watching us there's information about you if you want to follow these folks on social media um you know they do cool things so thank you all for introducing yourselves this here evening is a production of the rpg shipping and freight company known colloquially as ghostlight rpgs in the manner of the fabled ghost light that protects closed theaters, they've lit up a number of RPG streaming shows across this here channel and elsewhere, giving theater makers like us a chance to tell stories and play games in the midst of plague. We humbly invite you to follow this radio frequency and subscribe to this channel via telegram or post. Tonight, we're interrupting Ghost Light's regular programming to bring an adventure from Fistful of Darkness, a weird Western RPG by Stefan Struck, which itself is based upon Jonathan Harper's Blades in the Dark. I won't belabor you with more details because if you're here, you likely can Google it yourself. You can catch other shows from Ghostlight RPGs on Sundays at 10.30 a.m. and at this very same time on upcoming Fridays. Who knows what wonderful shows are coming around the band. But I don't want to waste our time with too many announcements. This here is going to be a Western. That means it's possible, though not certain, that we'll see gunfights, explosions, danger to animals, sexual content, and blood. It's going to be a fantasy western, so that could also mean monsters, demon, and blood magic. So, you know, be advised. Without any more ado, let's leap into Fistful of Vengeance. Matilda Schreiber, about an hour ago, wandering the dry wilderness of Annabelle territory, you saw a blood gate open up, and you entered it. 
Blood gates are a rare and recent phenomenon in this weird, fantastical West that we're inhabiting. They're portals that open and close at their own whim, seemingly. And they take visitors into another world not too dissimilar from the real, a place that people call the Tear. Now, you stand inside that landscape of the Terra. A vast desert stretches before you, not unlike the American Southwest, but the Terra is something beyond reality. Surrounding you is a strange and brutal wasteland where luminous ferns grow, where the birds that soar overhead leave trails of smoke, and where the distant mountains rise miles and miles into the air. The burning sunset paints the entirety of the landscape orange. The evening in the Terra is like our world, but under the influence of some childlike god lacking any sense of moderation. The reddest, most vivid sunset in Annabelle is nothing compared to the explosive gradient that climbs up the entire sky before you. The shapes in the clouds are as of wild and dancing spirits. Kristen, would you tell us a bit about your character's appearance and what you might be doing out here in the tear? Sure. Um, so Matilde Schreiber is 6'5", built like a rake, incredibly thin, a little startling to behold. Um, she has a long braid that's very, very messy, a headband to try and keep her hair out of her face. Um, and she's just splattered in paint from head to toe, uh, dressed in, in high-waisted trousers, a ruffling white shirt. And as she enters the tear, um, she, is, she is gripped with excitement for this is what she's always dreamed about, about making it back into the, the hellish, heavenish landscape. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Is oh, she and I would like to say she also has a easel strapped to her back. Mm, very Thank cool. You. Does she set herself down and start painting anything or does she, is she just wandering? What's her? I think so she enters the tear um, and she's, as she does, she starts muttering to herself like the, the the mountain I got to the the mountain, and so she's sort sort of sort of um, surveying the landscape, trying to figure out if she could get her bearings because she's been here before, but it was many years ago. Yeah, let's um, let, do you do you have a survey or a or a read in any of your skills? Could you I maybe do, do a survey and we survey. can see yeah. maybe if you could able to find this mountain that you're looking for? Yes. So. Um, Tell us what your number is, and then I'll explain how this works briefly to the audience. Well, I rolled a two. <laughs> okay, great. So in uh, in this game, in Fistful of Darkness, we we will roll using d sixes. Depending on how many how much skill you have in a certain ability, you'll have multiple dice. The highest number you roll indicates your success. A six is a complete clean success. A four or five is a partial success, and a one through three is a failure. Uh, partial success and failures mean that there will be consequences potentially, but if you're in a situation where there's danger, bad things may happen. In this case, Mathilde, you are surveying the blue distant landscape, looking for a mountain that you saw many years ago when you first came to the Terre and spent some weeks here. Now, as you are looking over that Terre and seeing this landscape, you see something else. You look up to see a figure riding out of the last crimson drippings of the sunset. She is silhouetted against the sky, drooped on her horse. As the horse sees you and comes within about 50 feet of you, it slows to a halt, and the person leans over, falls off the horse, and lands head first into the dirt. The horse looks at her unsympathetically, as if annoyed at her. What do you do? Um, I'll, I'll cross to where the body has fallen, um, and try and check for a pulse. Okay, great. You see uh, a woman there, um, two, uh, two pigtails. Um, she's dressed in rough uh, cow herder clothing um, or cowgirl clothing. Um, she's, uh, she looks pretty worn. She's got some cuts and bruises and you see on her, on her, in her side, there's a, a bullet wound um, that's actively bleeding and, and staining her shirt red. She gasps and looks up and he says, Lily, L Lily, have you have you seen you seen Lily? Um. Well, if you're referring to the flowers, I've seen many. <laughs> what? What? And she. Uh, I, I'm afraid I'm I'm not equipped to to handle 
wounds or blood or bruises. Um, perhaps maybe we should, um, well, perhaps we should, um, do you need anything from me? Uh, this woman bleeding on the ground <laughs> with the balloon <laughs> looks up at your question of whether she, you, she needs anything from you and goes, uh, help me. This is quite inconvenient, and I'll um, <laughs> so I'll sort of, I'll, I'll um, with my six five and my great upper body strength. Oh I'll yeah, absolutely. Sling her on the front of the horse. Great. I'll sort of step onto the horse, and or I'll lead the horse. I'll lead the horse sure. and try and make my way. Yeah. Back. Yeah. So you you prop her up on. She groans. Okay, thank you. Um, and then the horse, you know sort of lo the looks a little bit annoyed like who are you what are you doing to me um but uh but is willing to follow you eventually as you're as you're turning and starting to lead her away and your own horse uh you've led into here uh it's painted horse at some distance is up on the hill um as you're as you're putting her up on there you see mounted figures approaching across the desert you see now from this distance what appears to be a herd of cattle some three four miles distant from here mostly you can see just the trail of smoke that they leave behind um but you see three figures that are not going farther away because the herd appears to be going farther away, but three figures coming closer to you. What do you do? Oh dear. Um, uh, can I try and uh, get a sense of if these people are, are hostile or Absolutely. friendly? Absolutely. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's roll another survey, I think would be a reasonable yeah. is the thing to gauge that. Yeah. Can you sense that? One. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, so basically, the the one is going to mean that you uh, you are delayed because you're trying to get a sense of them. It is really hard to see them, and like it, you don't know if it's some trick of the light. But then, as they come closer, you realize it has nothing to do with your ability to see them. These figures mounted on horses, well, they ain't what you'd call normal. The horses, gray as ash, with wild eyes, snort fire, and this ain't no poetic license. There are, you can feel the heat of those flames. Well, there's, it's far enough. That is poetic license. But the men atop the horses are beyond human. Their eyes staring at you have no white nor black in them, just a deep blood red. And red mist, thick in color as ink, pours out of their eyes like smoke from the end of a cigar. Their skin is the deep gray of ash, and little fragments of ash fly off of their skin as they ride. One of them locks eyes with you and lifts a pistol. He says... Leave her to us. She ain't your problem. And his voice reverberates with a strange inhuman echo. I, well, I, I, I'm inclined to agree with you, but I, you seem like um, perhaps maybe not the best of sorts. And I'm, I'm going to start <laughs> trying to make my way a little faster here. <laughs> Amazing. The three uh, devil horsemen, uh, their horses start to trot um, as they're they're heading towards you, another one slings a what looks like a repeater off of his back, um, and uh, as it as it happens, one of them one of them shoots. Um, the bullet strikes the sand about six feet from you. Um, what are you doing? See that? I mean, that's not very good at all. <laughs> and I so I'll gesture to horse my yeah. painted mare in a distance. <laughs> Yes. Like it, it, maybe it'd be it'd be a good idea if you could. Uh, mm. And then um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to just try and book it. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Um, yeah. Do you have an action that you feel would suit that particularly? No, but I I can um. Uh, you could push yourself. You could spend two grit to put a one into into prowl, which would be attempting prowl. to get someplace without getting without getting seen or shot. That could be yeah, I would like to not get shot. So let's yeah. try that. Yeah, yeah, I'm into that. <laughs> so yeah, it's two, great. it's two grit. Yeah, two grit, and then you get one one dice. Two get two grit, not true grit. That's different. Okay. Although. Game. 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 All right, I'm going to use a different die. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. <indeed. laughs> Six. Heck yes. Hey okay. Yeah. So um, 
as you run, your horse comes towards you. Your horse, whose name is Horse, for anyone watching and confused. Uh, this beautiful painted mare, very small, rushes towards you um, quite quickly. You leap up onto her back and start pulling um, uh, this, this girl's horse, um, and you both start sprinting away. Bullets spray the sand around you. One of them hits uh, the saddlebags on, uh, on this, this woman's horse, um, and you hear her groan, but she's still vaguely holding on just to, to this thing. You guys both head, and there is um, the, tear, the, the portal, the, the blood gate that led you into the tear is some distance away. Um, you think if you succeeded in another one, you could get through unharmed. And I would have to spend two grit again. Uh, potentially, yeah. I think that's a rule, right? I think yep, it's not a yep. question if of potentially. Want, well, you could, unless you were thinking to do something else to try and distract them that would okay. that would require another thing. If you could, you could craft, you could do some crafty. Yeah, I would like to stuff. distract Let's, them. So yeah, I'm into it. Uh, as I'm as I'm on my painted mare, I have sort of bottles of paint around me, and I'm going to, you know, there's some sort of like slung across my hips. I'll uncork three colors um oh. and i'll use a tune and craft to sort of draw the paint up and out and above my head and it's going to sort of form um a uh, ruth kligman-esque like splatter paint art sort of above my head it's it's a beautiful canvas floating Amazing. in the air i'm trying to distract it. them yeah roll your roll your craft i think or uh, i mean whichever you prefer between craft and tune i would prefer craft <laughs> yeah you got the two dice there yeah do it Six. Okay. So, um, yeah. So you, you, just as you described, she pulls these paints out and, um, anyone who was able to see this paint would notice a, sh a sheen of, and glow of something impossible to it. They're, these paints have been made not simply with paint, but with some magical substance. Um, so she spreads them and the paint sticks in the air, creating this, this cloud. And one of the ghost-like, ghost-like figures passes through it. And the, um, and, you know, it's, you know, they, grab at their face and these sort of their flaming strange eyes sort of pull this this color out of their eyes um, but in the meantime bullets are flying and you eventually pass through the gate and have made it uh, to the other side beyond the tear um, you guys race for another probably half hour just to make sure that they haven't followed you but you you get the sense that they didn't leave the tear um, whoever these these guys are um, you as you're as you're on your way and the sun has fully set in Annabelle it's a much less dramatic sky than you see in the tear um, back to the normal quotidian world that you remember um, this girl um, leaning in her saddle says thank you uh, um, I, I uh, well I suppose you're welcome uh, I I I think I know someone. I think I know someone who, who might be able to. Uh, I'm not equipped. I'm not equipped for this. Um, and I'll take out a vial and I'll collect a little bit of her blood and I'll cork uh -huh. it, put it back in my <laughs> satchel, and I'll say, let's let's maybe uh, go find someone who's a, who's equipped for this. Right. So no, nothing weird at all. Just collecting some blood. No one's got to think about it. Um, so you uh, make your way across the landscape and uh, find yourself soon uh, at some distance from a ranch house out, uh, out in the middle of the, the land. Kaylee Gallagher, you are at your homestead out in the country. You're on the patio. You uh, hear your little boy, Jack, playing out. He says he's, he's talking to a, a, a newt little little lizard that he has and he says he says how you doing there mr roosevelt oh you're doing all right there and he's like running around the patio a little bit <laughs> so, uh, uh, what are you up to in this you know it's it's nighttime now there's a lantern probably you know hanging uh on a hook outside um would you describe first how you uh kaylee and and your son jack look and what kind of activity you guys might be up to in the evening uh, well, Kaylee is about uh, 29 years old. She's young. She's a mother. Um, she uh, looks like at one point she was very, very beautiful, very lively and everything. But she looks like somebody who's been going through some bad years recently. And so she's kind of a little sunken in in the face. Her eyes seem to be like permanently like red, like from crying. Mm -hmm. uh, she has curly like orange hair 
and uh, green eyes, and she's wearing all black. Um, and her son also has green eyes, but uh, his hair is uh, black, uh, which mm-hmm. he gets from his father. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, so some jeans, man. Yeah, <laughs> black <laughs> black hair will overpower that red. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and Jack's just wearing just you know a little button up and uh, some pants with uh, some over. Uh, what do you call it? Suspenders on them. Suspenders, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and just just sort of running around covered in dirt. As yeah. one does. Yeah, love it. Um, so uh, you're sitting there. I don't know if you're reading a book or what. You know, or... Yeah. Uh, she's she's probably bringing in uh, the laundry since it's yeah. night. She's yep. just bringing things in and just keeping an eye on him so he doesn't wander off. Yeah. You head into the house and hear the creak of the floorboards beneath your feet and are just reminded in the moment as you put these clothes away of the, the strange emptiness that has fallen on your house since the events of several weeks ago. But as but you're interrupted in that process as you hear uh, the boy calling for you. He says, "Mama, Mama, look what I found." He says that in Irish accent. Sorry, I forgot that he's Irish for two seconds. No, you're fine. Um, <laughs> look what Jack, I found. Do, Jack, don't you be bringing any more of those newts into this house. I don't want another frog <laughs> jumping out and scaring me. <laughs> mama, Mama, it ain't no, it ain't no reptile. It ain't no amphibian even. Look, it's a really tall lady on a really little horse. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so you head outside and you see Matilde Schreiber. Um, Matilde, as we've discussed, is 6'5 and rides this very small painted mare. And behind her, you see uh, another horse um, dragging a rider who appears to be slumped unconscious over the neck of her horse. Saints preserve us, what have you gotten into now? And uh, she's going to run up and, and, and try to keep the girl from falling out of her horse. Okay. Uh, off of her horse, out of her horse, Ooh. off her horse. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> out, of the, out of the saddle, I think. Is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Uh, I, well, I, I'm, it's possible I am a reptile. I, I've thought about it. It's a possibility. Um, this, this one is bleeding though. I can see that. What have you been doing? Where, where are you? Bring her inside. <laughs> I'm just gonna, just gonna to try and pull her off the horse and bring right. her into the house. Yeah. I'll uh, grab the legs. Yep, so the Thank two you. of you are able to <laughs> carry this girl inside. Um, as you walk in, Jack says, the problem is, is that if you're a reptile, the problem is they've, they've got cold blood. So that means right now, because the sun is not, you'd be too cold. You know, so are you cold right now? Is that, is that what's going on if you're a reptile? I'll lean down from my six five, like right into his face, like a little too intense to say, like, I am quite cold. <clears throat> and then make my way into the house. Jack, and then he'll, now's not the time. <laughs> he'll he'll say eventually to his mother, sort of whispering, say, I think she really is a reptile. It's a theory, dear. Go put some uh, put the put the water on the on the fire. Great. So he, he gets some water to, to a boil and this girl um, is laid down on the, on the table. Mm-hmm. She's bleeding, you're able to get her shirt off of her and get to, get to tending her wounds. Um, would you like to, would you like to, let's do a read roll to see how you can effectively Yay. treat her wounds. Okay, thank um, you. Yeah. Six. Amazing, yeah. <laughs> haley has got some skill with bandages and with, you're eventually, you actually have a couple of, um, you have a pair of tweezers, which you heat in the fire, you sterilize on the fire until they're extremely, extremely hot, get inside and you pull a bullet out of the wound. So to slowly get it out, squelches, it drops with a clang onto the table. Um, and the girl goes, ah, oh, oh, oh. Um, but eventually uh, you're, she's, eventually after she's bandaged, she gets into a state where she's a bit more coherent. Um, it's not a wound so horrible that she's, you know, she's gonna be able to walk uh, tomorrow. You know, she's, she's, She's hurt and is going to be injured for a while, but she's she's not out. She says, "I I really got to thank you. You you saved my life, both of you. My name's Alice Bailey, by the way. I'm Kaylee Gallagher. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Kaylee. And what was your name? Yeah. Uh um oh 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 oh. Your name? Yes." She thinks about it for 30 seconds. <laughs> Matilde. 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 <laughs> Matilde, nice to meet you. 
I, uh, I need to get back in there. I need to, I need to find my partner. I need to get our cattle. The flowers, the, the flowers you were looking for. No, Lily's my, my partner. She, we both, we both herd cattle and see, see, we were, it was a big job. It was about 200, 2000 head. And we were, it would be our biggest take ever if we could get them from here to Arcadia. But the Ashmaker gang showed up. I don't know if you've heard of them, that there's secessionists. They fought in the brothers war to protect their damn slavery. And well, they they drunk some bloodstone after some bad fight. You know, it kills most people, but the bloodstone made them strange. It made them mm. powerful. See, the gang killed a few of ours and then started driving us north in the wrong direction. And then this blood gate opened up and we headed in. I, I've never been in the terror before. It's terrifying, but I, I lost my partner, Lily, in there. And, and they've got all our cattle. I, I need, she stands up. Oh. Hold on. You're not going anywhere right now. Okay. 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 I need you to sit down so we can cover those up. Okay. Last thing I need you to do is pass out on my kitchen floor. Okay. Sorry. Now, we've encountered them before. Bunch of cowards. Bullies. You've seen them before? I have. They're less than desirable to encounter again. They, uh... Well, they recently killed my husband, and so... I am less than friendly with them at the moment. Yeah, I'd imagine so. We're... I'm really sorry. Where were they? They didn't follow you here, did they? She looks to Matilda. Oh. You've endangered Jack. Uh, um, I, I, they may have come through, but uh, at some point, we lost them. I think maybe. I didn't see anyone for a long time after we got out. I don't know if they left the tear. But they were close to here. The tear? Well, well space looks a little different in the tear, but the, the tear you is You really only... need to invest in a hot dairy. It's starting mm -hmm. to cook. Uh, cook your brain, I think she means. Uh, oh, oh, ah. I, well, I, perhaps <laughs> it's, it's what I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying, what I'm saying bandage woman, um, is, is it's only a, 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 a right. How long was the ride, Ted? How long did you really riding for? It was, sorry. It was about a, it was about a half hour after you got out of the blood. Game. A half hour on horse. We were moving pretty fast. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, they likely, you didn't see any trace. So they like, if, you know, they likely didn't follow you. Well, thank you for bringing Alice here. She wouldn't have survived without you. Oh, I think you did most of that. Maybe, look, but I wouldn't have known she was out there. Look, miss, I, ma'am, I, I don't, I don't, I don't oh you don't owe me anything. In fact, I owe you a great deal. But if these men killed your husband, and then we certainly have cause to go seeking for them. And I bet, honestly, I bet there's a bounty on their heads that we could that we could take advantage of. I, well, there's more than a bounty on their heads. I happen to know for a fact that they have quite a bit of gold and other things on them. Which uh between the three of us at this point would be a lot. What? So, you see what happened was my husband, damn fool that he was, he decided to run around with the wrong kind of people and got involved with uh, one of the other local gangs here, the Rough Boys. And uh, well, the Ashmaker gang, they weren't, I'm not sure how familiar you are with them before all of this, but they, uh, they weren't exactly impressive. I'll give them that. And well, the rough boys decided to, uh, just take what they wanted. And so they did, and they stole all their money and brought it here to hide. And that's when they showed up, but they were 
different. They were mad and terrifying monsters. And they stole the money back after they killed my husband. Luckily, Jack and I were hiding down in the cellar. But they do have that money. And I need that money. Jack and I need that money to get out of here. So if you're going after them, I will join you. But we're going to need a lot more help than what we have. Sounds about right. I mean, do you, would you be willing to come with us? I, you seem pretty comfortable out there in the tear, Miss Matilde. I've been searching for the tear my whole life. I don't need your money. Well, maybe a little bit, but um, I do need to go back. Well, sounds like three of us. Uh, is there anyone else that you're thinking of who, someone else who we could bring who could, I don't know, give us a little bit more firepower? I know someone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's cut. jump. Yeah, cut. Yeah, thank you. Cinematic moments here. So. All right. So, uh, Delilah Beauregard. It is the next morning in the town of Goldfinch. You are in the saloon house of Goldfinch. Um, and I'm imagining you know, the scene a little bit. Um, there's a gentleman, uh, there's a couple gentlemen around the table and a lady um, as well as yourself, but uh, one man in particular who's still got a hand of, uh, hand of cards. Um, he is a small gentleman in fine clothes with a waxed white mustache. Um, I'm imagining you're sitting against the window to the point where you're kind of silhouetted. I don't know if you've got a hat on or not, but I'm imagining you're kind of silhou silhouetted. You've got your, got your cards in hand. Um, he pushes a bunch of uh, chips out onto the table and says, Now, now, good lass, I, I believe you've got a choice to make. Are you folding, or are you going to meet my bet? I will not be folding today. Very well. So you uh, push your, your chips into the center of the table. So let's, uh, let's roll a sling roll to see how you do in this poker match uh, against this... Uh, this gentleman. Okay. Four. So, all right, that's a four. So, um, you, uh, you know, we've got the the hands all laid out. Just for the uh, for the full full uh, understanding of the audience, neither Delaney nor I are very good at poker in real life, so <laughs> we don't really have any idea what we're talking about here. <laughs> but but you know you know how it is when there's the moment when they do like you've got the three card you know you got we got three cards in the flop. Well, I guess we got the full flop at this point. But anyway, um, what happens is you know Del uh, our our girl Delilah. Oh dang it! Well, well well we'll do it after we do this. Delilah lays out her her cards one after the other and um, you know basically it's they're both because there's a bunch of hearts on the row um, both of them have two hearts in hand but he ends up having a um, a straight of with uh, straight with jack high and she's got a straight of course with a queen high um but uh <laughs> so uh the in, in this moment that he goes whoa confound it um and you pull all the chips towards you now describe for us what uh what your character looks like um, she's, uh, exactly what you would think of, like, a, a debutante Southern Belle. She's uh -huh. kind of dirty blonde hair, really icy blue eyes, um, of regular height, probably about 5'7". Sure. Um, slim build, but, uh, yeah. over the years, she has, I don't know, strengthened her physique. She's, she's, yeah. she's strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. strong. Yeah. Um, she's 23 years old. Mm -hmm. She's been on her own for about five years. She left her uh, family, her, her plantation. She was living on mm -hmm. a very well-to-do plantation up until she was 18. And she um, witnessed the murder of her caretaker, her kind of motherly slave. She never saw it as that. She's very adamant about the, the just the equality and fair treatment of all races, whatever. But uh, her father beat this woman to death. And in that instant, she grabbed the nearest gun and she shot him and killed him. So from that moment on, she has been on the run. Her brother and, you know, all of her father's friends, all the well-to-do people in this uh, 
Georgian town are kind of have been on the hunt for her and she has learned a lot in the past five years hiding yeah. from them and yeah. being a you know a young woman by herself in this in this time yeah this rough world yeah so she's had to learn you know learn how to take care of herself and you know there are you know you're out in one of the furthest territories the territory of annabelle uh, but there are states all the way along here that have you know wanted posters for this woman delilah beauregard and so she's changed appearance sometime over the years but this is that's uh, that's who this girl is so these these folks wouldn't wouldn't necessarily know or if they did you know this far out west people don't people don't care as much about those uh, those it eastern is, bounties yeah you know as in, ter in terms of costume outfit yeah yeah she, of course <laughs> tried to stray as far away from the puffy dresses and the fancy curly do's that she had to do. Yep. So she has like a messy top knot, you can see in the picture, and she wears Heck yes. everything her brothers were able to wear and mm. will never put another dress on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, amazing, love it. So uh, the the man in front of you, one uh, Micah Coldwater, uh, goes no no no. See here, she must have cheated somehow. She she must have. And the other people around the table say, Oh no, she did it fair and square. Don't you don't you complain? Don't you bring that up, Mr. Coldwater again? But um, as you you get your winnings, as you're about to leave, you run smack into a very large man. So, and the and Mr. Coldwater says, Sergey, you show her what's what. And a very large man goes, he says you cheat. Me? Do I look like a cheater? I do not know if cheaters have similar faces to other cheaters. You know, you're a very handsome man. You can attempt a consort role, I think. <laughs> <laughs> This is how she gets by. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Six. Amazing. Um, Sergey, <laughs> Sergey sort of looks at you. And he looks at his, his boss and looks back and says, this, this is nice to hear. One does not meet many genteel ladies in this territory. Perhaps sometime we... Uh, we go out and have some sirloin. There is a great restaurant in here, here in Goldfinch. What say you? I would be honored. I am at room number <laughs> ten. Yep. You can find me later. <laughs> Amazing. He uh, as as Michael Coldwell goes. You idiot! You idiot! You fool! Don't let him go. He, he just steps aside and opens the door politely for you as you as you leave the saloon. You uh, saunter down the steps, feel a little confident. The sun bathes you in warmth, and you see in front of you three people. You see Matilde Schreiber, who you may have seen before sometime, um, and you see Kaylee Gallagher. Uh, there's long red hair and uh, a girl uh, leaning on her horse um, trying to you know grin through a through a bit of an injury they're all standing and staring right at you uh, Matilde hey there Delilah <laughs> sorry we're good we're moving past it we're moving past it <laughs> old joke <laughs> well I haven't seen you in years how are you? Uh, two years and six months, but don't worry. I have not counted the days. All right. Just well, the months. Uh, sure. What can I do you for? What, who's this wonderful lady? Uh, oh, um, bandage woman. A bandage woman and, and this, her partner is, this one, her partner is Flowers. I'm Kaylee Gallagher. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. And this is Alice. Uh, I'm Alice Bailey, nice to meet you. Uh, Mathilde here says that uh, you have some skills in which we might be interested in hiring you for. Um, we have a proposition for you. At this moment, what's his, what's his name? Coldwater kind of comes oh. out the door. <laughs> Hell yeah, he's got it. Kind of peering out and I... <laughs> And I shoot like right to the right of the swing saloon doors. Uh -huh. 
and maybe it even like flaps him shut on his face or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. great. I love it. Roll the, roll the, the, the sling roll. Let's do that. I love it. I love this so much. <laughs> Three? Yeah. So um, what happens is um, <laughs> you're like, you're trying to do this like real fancy move. It's going to like slam it back in his face. Instead, he walks through the door and is fine. Um, well, he walks partway through the door. You shoot the thing. It hits off the hinge. It falls onto his leg and like, like on his shoe and he essentially like ends up just like tripping over this door and like falling to the side very ungracefully <laughs> like it's it worked generally <laughs> but he's just going oh tarnation tarnation <laughs> um. <laughs> i told you she was good she's oh good. she she's something all right <laughs> i think you're exactly lo what we're looking for <laughs> <laughs> wonderful let's well, maybe maybe we uh uh, if you, know, you all head back to Kaylee's ranch um, and uh, you get, uh, Delilah, you hear the, all of this explained to you. You hear about the cattle being stolen. You hear about the death of Kaylee's husband. You hear about the money that they may have, which they stole from Kaylee's husband and the fact that Alice's partner has gone missing. And of course, you hear that all this has been done by the Ashmaker gang. And that immediately makes me perk up because... I have history with the Ashmaker King. Mm. Wait, you, you do too? Asks Alice. <laughs> you know, there was a, um, one of the, one of the men um, actually is from my hometown and I was uh, propositioned uh, to marriage with him and I, for many reasons, declined He's a terrible man, and I will do anything to take him down. <laughs> men, men are never, never marry a man. Girl, I know. <laughs> I'm feeling quite alone on this idea. <laughs> ja That's Jack's fine. A, Jack, who's sitting with you, says, "Would it be all right to marry a boy? Maybe." He's looking up at both all of these strong, beautiful women. I am sure you will make a wonderful man. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Um, all right. So you, um, in terms of where you think to go next, you head out. Um, uh, one of you maybe takes a horse out to go check on that, that gate. And you find that the blood gate into the tear has closed in the interim. You get a sense that in order to in order to get back into the tear and find the gang, you may have to go looking for some more information. And the place that you get a sense that you should go is Fort Willimon. Fort Willimon is nearby. It is the westernmost military points of the United Territories. Um, they have, um, you know, it's it's a town with a palisade wall. Um, there are people there who you might be able to talk to. Um, there also also probably before you go, you might want to find some place to put Jack, unless he's uh, unless he's going to take a revolver and head out with. You <laughs> for... I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> yes, um, before they get to the uh, fort, um, yeah, I think uh, if we could make a stop by the White Lake tribe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you, uh, it's a. Uh, a little bit of distance to the to the southeast instead you enter some really beautiful green hills um with these like large jutting rocks and eventually find a, a beautiful lake and around which there's a band of uh the native folk who live here the white lake tribe um and they are um they're currently in uh, doing the very thorough work of uh, dealing with the buffalo hunt, uh, stripping all of the skins. And so there's a pretty strong stink of uh, the gore uh, of all this. And a lot of these people working very actively to make sure to uh, make good use of all the parts of these animals. Um, you see uh, a couple of people who you recognize. There's two men, Hanska and Wapasha. Um, and uh, then the person who, who you know, comes out of out of it all to meet you she's her hands are like up to the elbows with blood but she uh, she takes a little bit of fur and wipes it all off and um comes up and says hello mrs gallagher how are you i'm doing well i need to i would normally do this but i have to cash in that favor of mine sure um i need you to take good care of jack for me for a little bit I'm not sure how long I'm going to be away, but where I'm going, he can't go. It's not safe. I'm going after the men who killed my husband. 
I see. Well, say no more. She looks at Jack and says, "Hey, Jack, I uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of toads that live in this lake. I don't know if you'd like to see any. Maybe if you stay here for a few days, we can hang out. We can have we can find some toads. Would you like that?" Um, he says, "If if if Mom's got to go do something, then uh, yeah, if I could be here, that would be really great." Yeah. And um, so she, uh, Kaylee's gonna, you know, uh, lean down and she's gonna just scoop him up in a big hug, and she's just gonna say, "Be good, be brave, listen to what they say." I will, be Ma. careful. You better be good and brave too, Ma. And, and you're still going to take your bath. I love you, Ma. Good I love to, you too, good. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, she, goes gives off. Him a, she gives him a long kiss on the forehead and then goes back. <laughs> uh -huh. the, um, and, and before you do, um, uh, the, the woman, Taluta, uh, just says, thank you again for helping my father after he was hurt. I really very much appreciate it. Of course, um, anytime. So they uh, head back to their business and Jack Jack waves at you all and says, goodbye, reptile woman. <laughs> uh, don't, if, um, if you don't take baths, you might become one yourself. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, uh, he seems a bit perplexed at that, but nods enthusiastically. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, re returns to, the, to these, these folks who are taking care of him. <laughs> so uh, after another uh, couple hours of travel, heading up to Fort Willimon, a cloud of dust passes across the road, momentarily obscuring your vision. You lift your hands to your eyes, and when you take them down, you see Fort Willimon, the westernmost settled, po settled point of the colonists from the old country. Like most of quote-unquote civilization spreading out west, it's filthy, over overcrowded, and full of leathered people who've been hardened by the unfamiliar land. There are not only white folks here. Many are dark-skinned Alkebulani, freed after the Brothers' War and now seeking their own fortune as ranchers, explorers, and bloodstone panners. Others are Anahuaca, speaking fluidly in the musical tones of the Catalan language. There are natives here as well. You can see some from the White Lake Band, who you just saw. The Starling Tribe and even a rider from the Grey Empire are visible here. They sport not only the clothes, weapons, and markings of their diverse cultures, but also the weaponry of the United Territories, which they have learned something of, and sometimes mastered better than even their creators. Springfield rifles, Colt handguns, and Spencer shotguns. Some are bringing in the strange steaming pelts of tear bison, creatures that emerge from the wild spaces beyond the bloodgates. Some appear to be here just to visit the saloon. In your search for the Ashmaker Gang, you could reach out to any of these groups, but you also have a pretty good sense of a few people who might be able to help you. Um, uh, Lieutenant uh, Sally James, the commanding officer of the troops here, might have a clue if you can get in to see her. Or if you want a more direct approach, you know that Shadrach Johnson sometimes stays in Amelia Crane's boarding house. He is a member of the, the Ashmaker Gang. You could try to break into his room. On top of these options, you uh, smell something uh, despicable and cowardly on the air, and you know what that means. That means Chester Wade, a fence who buys from thieves, is probably here in the saloon. You could shake him up and he'll shake him up enough and he'll likely spill. Hmm. Let's see. I think that anytime there is a chance to terrorize a male, <laughs> the Lila just like loves to <laughs> partake uh, so i think she tries to convince them to go that route yeah for chester wade the, yeah. the fence uh -huh. well i'd say you're the expert on this one so i will go with your advice mm -hmm. fine by me <laughs> <laughs> all right you head into the saloon, step through the, the saloon doors. This is, this is a different one than the Goldfinch Saloon where you shot off the door. This one's saloon doors are intact. Um, but there are uh, plenty of folks milling about. There's a barber doing, uh, doing shop in the back of the, the saloon, um, you know, shaving some folks. And uh, you see, you know, uh, the bartender who uh, waves to you as you enter. Po folks are just milling about. Nobody realizes anything to say, th say to you. But um, you see... At the, at the back of the bar, a pale figure who pokes his head up above the others who are drinking, sees you, and then begins to bolt for the back door of the saloon. Ah, 
run after him. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, I, I mean, I would like to run back out the front and run around to the back to like- Amazing. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Um, uh, let's see, what would be a good uh, role for that? You don't have Prowl, I assume. Oh, also, in the days following, in the days where you sort of healed some of your wounds and got Alice better and everything. So like, it's been maybe a couple of days, uh, everyone's grit has refilled entirely. So, uh, so Matilde, you had spent some grit earlier. You have, you have had the time to, to get back all everything that you had, you had spent. Um, anyway, so, uh, you, um, yeah, you're able to get, uh, yeah, honestly, I think you, so. You're doing sort of a pincer motion. A couple of you are going through the back of the saloon, and the other ones running around the back. I'm very distracted, and I'm just sort of slowly making my. The other two are moving fast. <laughs> <Amazing>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Alice is outside watching the horses. Um. So, uh, so Kaylee, you sort of run through the people in the bar, pushing towards this figure, and then uh, Delaney, you uh, Delilah, you run around the the back of the saloon. Uh, there's a there's a little hand like this this probably 14 year old acne kid with like slopping some pails and you kind of kick him aside and he goes, whoa, there, um, <laughs> falls into the, falls into a fence. Um, but you get around back and both eventually you guys are both facing against the form of Chester Wade. His, his greasy hair is slicked over his head. He's got a little droopy mustache. Um, and he says, ladies, ladies, I promise that whatever debt collection agency you represent surely can have some patience on my behalf. Oh, gosh. We're not from a debt collection agency, sir. I hate I this. Uh, oh, I, I, I see. Well, uh, if there is something that I can, that I can do for you, any any business. I, I'm sorry to have fled. I simply was on edge. The, this is a, a dangerous town, a dangerous line of work. Do you need something from me? Yes. We need you to tell us all you know about the Ashmanker gang and uh, know that there will be consequences if you do not tell us. Uh, Okay. Uh, well, okay. So let's let's make a roll. Let's see how you're going to uh, do. You, you don't have any command, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think Kaylee's got sway. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'll say I'll say she'll take it from here. <laughs> <laughs> so how how does Kaylee take it from there? Uh, Kaylee is going to um, just she's gonna just pull herself upright, just look like a fine, proper, upstanding woman mm -hmm. and non-threatening at all. <laughs> uh. And she's just going to say, um, uh, what we're looking for is just particular information. Perhaps you know the whereabouts of how to find a tear. Um. Surely a intelligent and handsome man like you who's clearly very educated with no such important things all right let's roll that sway let's see how that works here we go huh? <laughs> you got it <laughs> four <laughs> okay, okay so four is a partial success so um so he hearing you call him handsome grins revealing the six remaining teeth within his oh. mouth um <laughs> three, three of which do not look long for this uh this world oh, um <laughs> but he uh, <laughs> he he but the grin you realize is not one necessarily of of flattery but more of you know of, of spite or realizing you know you're you don't mean what you say and he he says i i am aware of the ashmaker gang i certainly have heard that name before um however um if i knew their location I would require additional motivation to share it with those I do not know. I mean, can I just take my gun out and hold? <laughs> yeah, you totally can. <laughs> yeah, let's do a sling, just yeah. to, like do a fancy. Kaylee's just gonna sidestep the gun. <laughs> yeah. have motivation for you. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Let's roll your sling to see how, how effectively you can intimidate him with some gunplay. Six. Okay, great. Yeah, so you uh. You take, you know, you, 
Kaylee steps out of the way. You pull up the gun and just like one of those like you know quadruple spins, doing all some cool stuff, and then just like pointing it sort of generally in his direction, just as a sort of this low, simple threat. And uh, he looks at the gun and looks at you and says, "Ladies, you should. I will tell you the location of the Ashmaker Gang, but you should beware if you are." trying to go into the tear. There is no knowing if you will make it out. Again, it is wild in there. It is dangerous. People say that there are spirits that live there, spirits that can communicate with you, that could kill you. If you're heading into the tear, it's not just the Ashmaker gang you're going to find. It's going to be all sorts of trouble. All that said, I merely felt some requirement to warn you of it. Uh, all that said, there is a blood gate that has been active for some time near the railway by Blue Gulch about an hour's ride from here. And I believe that it is through that place that the Ashmaker gang went. Um, yes. Know that if any of this information is false, we know where to find you. Cer certainly, I am, I am well cognizant of the nature of reality. And can you please take a bath? <sighs> Ma'am, I have cleaned myself with the finest Epsom salts. I do not need your hygiene recommendations. <laughs> um, I think Matilda has wandered over at this point. She has a hat on. Uh. She, <laughs> she, she looks to Kaylee first and goes, um, no more cooking with her new hat that she has stolen. And then she takes a hair out of um out of his head wait wait chester wade out of chester yes. wade's hair uh -huh. out of his head stores uh -huh. it away and oh. says I, I i really i really can find you i have methods i i i really do have methods are As you in the company of these other ladies or simply an additional harpy sent to torment me <laughs> She's our I, guide. <laughs> <laughs> We're your worst nightmare. <laughs> Three harpies set to torment you, yes. Very well. I suppose the, the collective is more comprehensible. Is that all you require of me, ladies? For now. Very, very well. Um, he slinks back uh, into the saloon, uh, leaving you with your information. So you now know where to follow the uh, the Ashmaker gang. Um, unless there is anything else that you would like to do in town, you head head on your way to uh, to Blue Gulch. That's it. You um, you travel some distance, um, uh, riding across the the dry country, um, and eventually reach Blue Gulch, which is not terribly blue as many of these things with colors are um you uh you find the you cross the railway line there's um you actually see a train path that is powered by this strange stuff called bloodstone that people have found coming through the world from the tear which has just started to occur in the last few years uh, but bloodstone has many strange properties including that it can power electric systems so this train is running on bloodstone and you can see the red plume uh, of the smoke that rises from it as opposed to the black uh, flume of coal um, it passes by and you see the the name northern rail and industries plastered along along the side of the the caboose there uh, but it passes by you without incident no one stops or waves at you um, climbing up a bit of blue gulch uh, you end up finding a blood gate it is like a bloody rip in reality uh, crimson liquid seeps out of it, or what looks like it, defying the laws of gravity all around the edges of the tear. It is, it is as if a drop of brandy is falling into a clear glass of water, but then the brandy opens up and reveals a window to another world. The landscape around you is dried and burnished, but inside the tear, there is a blossoming of flowers. They are a vivid indigo spread out before your vision. You can hear the crackle of a distant storm and looking, you see a blood red cloud raining upon the red and distant land. Um, so as you are traveling, you, you head into the, uh, you head into the terror and there are clear tracks 
you are able to, at least for now, follow what you believe to be the tracks of the Ashmaker Gang. You can see the the traces of their of many horses that have gone through this uh, this terror in and out to the point at where it's wearing down on some of the plants. Now. We haven't uh, taken all that much time to meet your horses, but we do, uh, as they as time passes, you see a little bit of them. Uh, Kirby, um, who's Ka Kaylee's, uh, uh, do you, uh, would you describe your horse for us actually? And sure. how he behaves on the trail? Uh, <laughs> Kirby is uh, an Irish cob, uh, which is a very large uh, horse. Uh, they have like the long hair over their, uh, their hooves. Uh, he is like a light orangish brown and white splatter. Um, and well, not quite splatter. He's not like a painted horse. Um, sure. and he has like bright blue eyes and he looks like he's about to wet himself. He is one of the most cowardly horses you'll ever meet, but he's also <laughs> a very big horse. He's built yeah. like a house. Yeah, this, <laughs> this absolute, just like massive boy, um, who, you know, a outside of the gate, like rears up, like frightenedly, just like, I don't know what I'm doing in here. Um, and like stay like, but when he first comes in through the gate, like his, his, you know, puts his hoof in and out. So he's like, yeah, I don't know about it. You know, he's very, very nervous. <laughs> um, like kicking his sides. Carby, you're embarrassing me. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. How is everyone else's horses behaving and what do they look like? So we've, we've met horse, Matilda's uh, well-named and uh, accurately named and painted mare. Um, mm -hmm. How does she behave as you enter into the, the terror? Well, Matilda doesn't have a very good um, control over her horse, so it's sort it, it, it not like it's bolting, but it's just kind of wandering slowly. Matilda's uh -huh. sitting atop, not really minding that she has no control over this animal as the animal's sort of wending wherever it wants yep. to go. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and it's, you know, with this absurdly tall, you kind of look like as if Don Quixote was riding Sancho Panza's mule. <laughs> Um, <laughs> sort of with this big old hat keeping the sun <laughs> off of you. Um, and then uh, Delilah's horse, Titus, how is he behaving? He's very good. He's a good boy. <laughs> yeah. he, uh, he is a very large black stallion. Um, mm -hmm. He was once a very impressive black stallion, but mm -hmm. he, I've had yeah. him since I was, I don't know, 15. And yeah. he is. Yeah. He's showing his age. He's like kind of crying <laughs> a little bit up on his like. Uh, his yes, snap. on his snout. Yeah. I yeah, mean, but... he just he's a little needy. You know, whenever I get off, he like is very expectant of <laughs> some sort of treat or some sort. Yeah. Of... <laughs> and yeah. we're very we're very close, and so like, you know, if if I sit if I sit on the ground, he will like lay down next to me, and it's it's a very yes. nice relationship. But yes. he's he's just showing his age. Yes, absolutely. And uh, Alice, who has joined you and is coming along with you, uh, her horse, uh, Guthrie, and her, they kind of bicker with each other. Like, she'll be like, oh, you damn fool. And he, he'll just have kind of, you know, go back at her. They just like constantly like, you know, the odd couple with each other. Um, uh, but yeah, so you enter the tear and it's, you know, once again, this beautiful and strange reality this space that stretches out before you um and the you know the mountains are just way taller than you ever perceived mountains as being in the real world and this 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 storm on the distance you know is like a bright vivid red all the, you know, this, and this, the lightning that strikes in it is this orangish color um but you're all, all along your path it's actually quite nice and the the sun shines down through you know big huge dramatic clouds um do you guys talk about anything as you ride or do anything particularly as you're riding on the trail I would like to try and see if I can find the mountain. mountain. Yes. The mountain. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's do another uh, another survey. And you could push yourself if you wanted to get yourself another die, but your call. Um, that's okay. Yeah, I'll yeah. Just you'll do you'll save survey. it. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Three. Ah, dang it. <laughs> so you um. So the way this happens is like you and your horse are sort of like wandering a little bit away from everyone, particularly it, it, you guys always notice that Matilda's trying to get up onto higher elevations. She's constantly getting up onto a higher path, looking and looking up over, you know, she, you know, squinting through her, through her, under her hat. Um, and you see lots of beautiful mountains and some of them like look to be surrounded by halos of clouds. Um, but none of them, none of them are the mountain. And you sort of, Basically, to your east is this, you know, well, not to your east, to your right is this 
set of mountains like the, you're, you're sort of walking along the edge of of a mountain range so it could be sort of lodged among them but it's hard to tell where exactly it might be you don't get a sense uh, but you do uh, as you're as you're riding uh, there are a couple of large uh, sort of ibis like birds that whose whose uh, feathers are totally brilliant red uh, who come and pester you and um, one of them lands on the saddle behind you and starts trying to peck into your saddlebag seeing if they can get get food from you what do you do with them i am um, lightning fast with my i just reach out and i just try and hug it close to me <laughs> amazing let's roll brawl to see how effective you are doing that i love it <laughs> oh no you got this. Five. Five. Yeah. So you you grab this 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 ibis into an embrace. It does not appear terribly affectionate, um, but it uh it and kind of like taps at your shoulder as if like it's <laughs> wrestling with you and is trying to tap out. Um, My but, tail. Uh, I, I give it little kisses. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not watching like yeah, we're just standing there watching this happen. <laughs> Kissing this bird. That's attacking her. I, <laughs> yeah. I've I've waited years to be back here. And it it flies off uh, after you whenever you let it. Um, yeah. Anything else so, you guys do as you travel or talk about? Do you, I mean do you, is there any response to that? I, don't, I feel like we might get to know each other a little better. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what kind of things of course, would might you talk about? Go well, I find out about Kaylee's husband and Yes. And maybe we kind of give a very vague explanation of how matilda and i know each other yeah well i'm curious what <laughs> yeah. they would say so, what, so what how might exactly they did what? you <laughs> how exactly did you two meet anyway uh you 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 take this one matilda <laughs> well <laughs> that's you're, the a brave you're the communicator here <laughs> there, was, <laughs> there was a train there were bad men, as m most are. There was rocks. There was horses. There was drinking. There was an inn. There was the taste of lemon and something else that I can't quite... The taste of lemon and something else that I can't quite... And she trails off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that explains everything then. <laughs> I think it was ale. <laughs> ale, the taste of lemon and ale and maybe something else. <laughs> oh. Are you a, are oh. you some sort of poet, uh, Alice asks you? Words are not my specialty. Sometimes people say that to me, so I don't know where you're getting that idea. Well, it just sort of sounded a bit poetic, like some sort of ballad that one might say. I don't know. What is it that you... So I guess I see that thing on your back. I assume that's not a carpentry set. Are you a painter? I am a, a painter. I am a painter. Oh, doesn't that sound good? I am a painter. It, 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 certainly. Um, could I, do you have any of your paintings we could see? Is that allowed? And I'll, um, I'll pull out, I'll pull off. Are we still writing? You, you could have stopped for a snack or something. Well, we don't need to. I'll pull <laughs> off an, a blank canvas, okay. sort of prop it on my horse's neck as yeah. I'm you know, straddled like a <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, child on a on a rocking horse, and uh -huh. um, I'll start painting the the four of us like okay. in the moment. Aww. Very cool. Uh, let's roll a craft to see how well that manages. Normally, you wouldn't have to, but just because you're uh, riding a horse actively while painting. <laughs> Five. Yeah. So you, well, describe what your painting looks like. So you, you're able to essentially make something that's really close to what you envisioned. What does it look like to others who might observe the painting? So it looks mostly realistic. Hmm. Um, it's the four of us. We're together. We're holding hands for some reason. <laughs> 
but we're all sorts of um the the colors are off so delilah mm. It looks mostly like Delilah, but her skin is like bright, bright yellow, like a lemon. Mm. Um, let's see, Kaylee, uh, again, looks mostly like Kaylee, but there's sorts of like blue stripes on her. It's like a very gentle blue. Um, and then Alice mostly looks like Alice, but um, there is green around her and there's a lily vine sort of winding itself up her leg and off on the side of the canvas. Mm. That's, That's really very quite digital. Yeah, it's quite lovely. Thank you for showing us that, Matilde. You can have it and I'll sort of <laughs> take the canvas. Oh. It's a pretty small canvas. <laughs> sure, yeah. Hand well, it over. Um, th thank you. Um, is it all right if I like curl it up? Is that gonna ruin it i guess i should probably let it dry for a while huh uh, let it dry and and then um well you you could you stretch it over wood um perhaps i'll show you all right yeah well if we camp tonight or something yeah. if we survive yeah that too i'll show you all right Th oh. thank you <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, any other like discussions or interactions that happen as you as you drive? Um, yeah, Kaylee's gonna just. <laughs> uh, uh, Kaylee's nice. just gonna just gonna ask. Um, so, I feel you've made it quite clear you're not a fan of men, in particular. Any? Uh, uh, you mentioned before that you were engaged to someone in the Ashmaker gang. Um, I'm just, I'm just a little curious of this, um, animosity. Uh, let me be clear. There was a proposal, but there was not an, an, an oh, forgive me. accepting of that proposal. Um, I don't mean to get too personal, but there were unwanted advances and he, I, I don't know that he was in it for the right reasons, whatever it was, I, um, I knew him and I knew that that was not the type of person I wanted to be with. Yes, I, I say that I do not like men. I have not given up the idea that there may be some remotely okay men. <laughs> but I just think that... <laughs> I think they're wired differently, and I think that it is in a um, in a uh, malfunctioning manner. <laughs> I, but I can't agree with you on that one. <laughs> there are some moments where you just you just shake your hand and wonder. <laughs> yeah, but this one's bad. This one is very bad. If he's if his the rest of his gang is anything like him. It's who, very bad. Who was your, your, who was this man? His name was Joshua Ashby. Joshua Ashby. Ooh. And I, I don't know exactly what has happened to him. I know that something happened where he is no longer human. Um, I don't know anything other than that. Oh. No, I don't oh, I, I thought you were going to say something. No, 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 I was thinking about <laughs> um, speaking as else, but no, go ahead. Yeah. Um, the, uh, yes, whatever the Ashmaker gang has become, these, this bloodstone, it's turned them into something foul. They're, they're not even human anymore, in my opinion. Mm -mm. Not at all. Um. The, uh, the landscape continues to pass by you and as if as if called on cue by your uh, your mention not the ashmaker gang yeah. but blood oh. <laughs> yeah it's like oh no yeah uh, <laughs> you uh, you see a stream at some distance that's passing by and the waters of it run red um, this is this phenomenon that you've seen sometimes in the world around you uh, the world back in Annabelle which is that some streams if they're sort of poisoned or diluted by a source of bloodstone will run red and one can find fragments of it in the water um, so you see this uh, at some distance below you. You pass by it and 
you know, the, the horses are able to step on enough stones to get through the, the stream without any, any particular happenings. You do see uh, sort of before you um, fall in the path, there is a gulch that opens up. It's probably another 30 miles, um, probably enough distance that you would probably have to camp overnight. But before you make it there, you pass another larger river. Uh, all of these, these streams appear to be coming out of the mountains. But this, uh, this larger river is about um, 300, um, 300 feet away, maybe, a little ways down the hill. But um, this is uh, much of the day has passed at this point. And as the evening comes, you see that river. And you see a flock of those same sort of ibis herons uh, birds that, uh, that Matilda interacted with earlier down by the water. They're all drinking from the water there, um, and they, they're, they're blood red and look at you with, with vicious eyes. Um, but as you are approaching, trees begin to sprout from the ground at oh. alarming rates. There is a tree that, that grows right next to you, Delilah, um, so much that your, your head is caught in some of the brambles of this tree. Oh. Um, and there's these bright uh, orange uh, sort of autumnal colors that, uh, that explode from it. Um, you see that there are more of them starting to grow around you. What do you do? Well, I imagine at this time, Kirby's going to run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Let's see which direction. Kirby, let's see which direction Kirby goes. I'm going to roll a die and see what happens. All right. So he runs sort of generally in the right direction. He takes a hard right and sort of smacks into Matilde's horse a little bit, like kind of shoving her to the side a little bit as he runs uphill sort of towards some rocks, sort of neighing and confused. Um, yeah, anybody else? What do you, so she, he's bolting. Uh, what, what <laughs> She's is, hanging on for dear life at this point. <laughs> yeah. What are you guys doing? I'm hopping off and trying to free Delilah from, from, the, yeah, from the branches, the right? Yes. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Did yeah, it take me great. off of my horse? I mean, like. No, no. You're you're basically just like it's like you're walking through a, a, a big tree. Like you just smacked your head into a branch and are kind of like caught in there a little bit. Here you're, you're okay. still you're still on Titus. Um, okay. Yeah. You can uh, you can brawl to try and get her free from the branches, uh, Matilda. Yes. Yeah. Um, I will do that. Three. Okay. Um, so, uh, Kaylee, you were able to wrangle your, your, your horse there, Kirby, and get him sort of back in the direction. Uh, you have some trouble getting her out of the, the trees, but partially it's because so many are growing that it is, it is essentially impossible to believe that moments ago there was not a forest here. You are now inside a forest of trees that have just grown instantaneously around you. This, this insane thing. And if these, these birds are now flying through it. And as you, and uh, Delilah, you're able to get yourself untangled. As you step out, you all hear a voice. It echoes around you and says, what, 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 what brings you here? And that is where we will take a break. Uh, <laughs> <yay>! <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're just going to take a like two, three minute break so everyone can take a second to go to the bathroom. So folks in the chat, you, you chill out for a moment, uh, but we will, uh, we will be back in just a couple of, uh, of, of moments. So uh, Justin's going to take us out to pause here. Uh, so thank you. See you in a couple minutes.
I, I love we all came back at the exact same time. That's <laughs> yes, some yes. good timing. Very well timed, guys. I'm we are so it. good. Music is so skilled at coming back at the same time. Mm. Guys, this is really really fun. Thank you. Um, this is a blast. <laughs> yeah, you guys are really. Kristen, you're me. killing me. <laughs> oh. I love you so much, girl. Rebecca, when you were talking about your husband, and you were, and then when you were talking. <laughs> When you were when you were healing her and you were like actually doing actions, I'm like, what? Like she's <laughs> miming things. This is another level, I tell you. Oh no, they can hear us. That's <gasps> fun. Yeah. All right. Well, you know Hi, what? Everyone. Let's let's just get ourselves back in now that they can now that hear our us? secrets are being revealed to the public. I mean, it's okay. We're all just having a good time. This is the first, I think this, this is the first inter intermission that is, I don't know if they did intermission during childish things, but I think this may be the, yeah. <laughs> no worries, Justin. No worries. Yeah, let's, well, let's, okay. I, I think we're ready. If I mean, ready. we did not say anything wrong, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Luckily, it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, no I worries. hate the audience. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no weird revelations. All right, folks, welcome back. You uh, may have heard some whisperings from behind the curtain, but I can assure you none of us were speaking. Um, oh, uh, hello and uh, welcome back to Fistful of Vengeance. This is our weird Western one-shot um, in the style of all the uh, spaghetti Westerns. Um, but uh, we uh, thank you for your attendance and participation and interest so far. We are looking forward to bringing this to an exciting conclusion. Uh, I do not wish to announce anything else as I am doing this impromptu as is. Let us continue where we left off. There was, um, as you enter, as you were crossing the, uh, the, the ford to this river, um, suddenly a forest sprouted around you and you felt yourself surrounded by these autumnal trees of orange and yellow and bronze. Um, and then from that from that forest came the words, what brings you here? What do you all do in response? Uh, we're here to get the Ashmaker gang. <laughs> you seem uncertain. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> yeah, can we see anybody? Like, is there, is there the, is uh, this just the a only thing? Or? The only source of noise that you can see is even though there is not there, there's like a very small breeze that reaches you, but the leaves above are moving as dramatically as if there was a huge windstorm. And with the movement comes the words um, oh. to to which it replies, um, this is our home. We are its denizens. And you are. I am Kaylee Gallagher. I have come to seek uh, vengeance and collect something that belongs to me. I see. Um, uh, uh, I, I'm, um, she thinks about it for 30 seconds. Mathilde, <laughs> Mathilde Schreiber. Her name's Mathilde, says Alice. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I once, stored my heart in a mountain and I'd like it back. Oh. Um, my name is Delilah Beauregard and I just want to rid the world of terrible man. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the creature says, men, mountains, we do not make these distinctions for ourselves, but, but, but there are intruders here, this, this group you call Ash Makers, yes? Yes. They have invaded our home. And the, the leaves sort of stir in frustration and anger. Um, we do not like trespassers, and there are more and more. We know these invaders and would rid them, would rid this place of them ourselves, but they, they are infused with our essence. Um, and you see uh, the, the trees sort of melt 
Um, and as they melt, the one of them in front of you turns into this fiery form of this glowing sort of spirit bison um, with these you know big glowing horns, um, uh, which says, we cannot defeat them alone. Um, and the other trees around you form until you are surrounded by this herd of like spirit buffalo. Well, we'd, we'd, we'd gladly take the any help you can give us. We'd be more than happy to, to rid them of, uh, rid you of them. And uh, what can, what can we do to help? We, we will be alongside you. You will need our help. Mm-hmm. And uh, as, yeah, as, as they're, uh, as they're saying this, some of these bison are just sort of fading into fog and disappearing until there's only like a dozen or so left. You get the sense that you have only a short window if you have anything else you want to ask them or to say. Can you tell us where to go? <laughs> um, <laughs> they, uh, uh, m- one of them uh, transforms from a buffalo into what looks like a person, um, very long hair, masculine build. Um, but like completely made out of this sort of blue mist. They step forward towards Mathilde um, and say, you are touched. And they grab one of the vials off of your uh, belt and pluck it open. And uh, you see it, this, they, uh, they put, do, the, do this thing. I don't know how to describe this in words now. And uh, <laughs> several, uh, several hairs fall into the vial. Um, and then it says, good luck. And it disappears into the mist. Well, good well, luck sleeping tonight. I, um, <laughs> weird. <laughs> Don't worry, I I know what to do. Um, I know what to do. Then we're following you. <laughs> <laughs> so is it is it evening? Is this like a moment where we need to rest, or are we pressing forward? It's it's evening. You'll probably be uh, probably in a couple hours. You'll need to sleep, but you're and but you could definitely reach the uh, the gorge that you saw by tomorrow if that's where you're headed, or yeah, you know, if it's beyond there, it might take longer. But yeah, so you're definitely gonna have to sleep tonight soon. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I have two hairs. You said a couple. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, multiple. Yeah. Um. So you save it till tomorrow, or you do something tonight. You can probably it, ride for another hour. Okay, and it does seem like we're going. We're heading to the gorge. That's. <laughs> I realize I said that as if an indication of something. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? It's probably oh, a mystery. This is uh, this this adventure is not on rails. I promise. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'll take I'll take one of the hairs out. Okay. Um, I'll, as well, my palette knife, my um, palette, and um, I'll unclip some paint that's made with a bit of bloodstone. Mm. Um. I'll mix it together with the hair, and as I do, it starts to glow, um, and I get it a little liquidy. Um, with my paintbrush, I take the back of my hand, I drop the paint onto the back of my hand, and it begins. Steams little. Yeah. And it begins to move in a direction. Yeah. So the like, is it like the as if the liquid drop of paint is pointing like a compass, or does the paint itself rise off of your hand? How does it work? I think it, it it's like the paint um, is sentient. It, mm-hmm. it moves the way paint might move, like it drips. Yeah, but it's dripping without in the direction. In the direction. It, it, yeah. It's not gravitational. It's getting pulled somewhere slowly. Cool. Yeah. So you watch these sort of trails of paint as the stuff drags, and points you. What a surprise towards the gulch, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the canyon. Yeah. It's this way, and I'll start <laughs> going to the gulch. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, Mateo, you, you, you said that you left your heart on a mountain. Do you, what do in you mean by that, love? Um, it, well, in a mountain, I... um. I once 
I had my heart broken and I didn't want it anymore. And I found a place I thought would keep it safe. Here, somewhere in here is a mountain that still has my heart. And I keep walking. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> I told you, I think she's a poet. I think you might be right. <laughs> Just saying, I ain't no expert. <laughs> So you all uh, ride for about another hour and eventually find yourselves camping in the woods. Um, uh, Alice pulls out a guitar and plays a little bit. This is where I, I will point out that Emily literally wrote a song that would have been performed in this moment live on the stream, which would have been so cool. Uh, maybe she will be sharing it at some point. Maybe we can share it uh, with you guys. Um, anyway, it's beautiful what I've, what I've heard of it. It's not finished yet, but anyway. Um, so we're sad to not have Emily, but where but anyway that that song may yet uh, have its day so um yeah the uh is there anything that you guys would like to do while you're at camp anything you'd like to um that you talk about with each other or do in preparation you get the sense that um you know tomorrow you will likely face your foe whoever they are i think that we're i mean we're bonding and so i think yeah. there's like a time around the fire where I'm, I'm kind of teaching him some sleight of hand like some yeah i always have i always have a deck of cards and uh-huh so I'm, I don't know, I'm teaching them some card tricks. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's great. Yeah, so you guys learn a couple of little, little bits that she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> how does everyone do it at learning the, the cards? We, we won't decide this by roles, just in character. How would how, how well would your characters do? Uh, so I think there's like one card trick where you're supposed to sort of draw a specific card out. Matilde can't get the hang of it at one point. Um, she like quietly uncorks a black paint and as <laughs> as she's sort of flipping the card around she's very quickly using her attune skill the paint sort of floats up and like splatters so it looks like a spade suddenly it's like oh, cool. it's kind of bad We're immediately and, and she... immediately i see it because i'm so fast i'm like no. <laughs> wait a second <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. it's the it's the eight of spades that's what i'm supposed to do I see you. <laughs> and I think Kaylee does all right with it, but uh, she's got very nimble fingers from yeah. uh, her medical experience and also sewing and stuff. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, I think I think the idea of like cheating people is kind of like Anathema she's just kind of her. Yeah. yeah, she's just like, oh, I don't know if I should learn this. Like, <laughs> but she's having fun at the same time. Cro so it's just crosses like she's, herself a little bit. Yeah, but she's having a good time too. So she's just like, oh, I'm being so bad right now. <laughs> and as both of you are quite good at it, Alice sits there going, oh, fuck, damn it. <laughs> I was just like, cannot get the get the trick going right. <laughs> um, and uh, her horse Guthrie, seeing her doing badly, this sniffs at her like, like pff, pathetic, and walks off by himself. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, "Oh, screw you!" Um, <laughs> I want to know this horse so bad. I love it. <laughs> um, all right, so the uh, you guys sleep overnight. You got camp. You've got some, you know, place to you have a little fire, which you put out early on enough, um, and uh, wake up in the morning ready to continue on your journey. Uh, Mathilde, um, unless there's any particular method by which you do it, you you know do the paint thing again with some of the the hair you had uh, you still had from the uh, this the bloodstone spirits or whatever they were that spoke to you. Um, you head uh, some way down into sort of the lower lands there and eventually you know find the this river, the one that you had crossed before, this is the earlier part of it. It sort of emerges from uh, this canyon which is far more dramatic than the ones that exist in our world. I mean, it is just hundreds of feet high to the very top of it. Um, and it is red, once again, red as blood. Um, and uh, uh, you see deep, uh, deep, not deep down, but half a mile down into the canyon, you see a small sliver of smoke. So you are currently some distance from the, the edge of the canyon. What do you, what do you guys do? Um, I, I'm trying to think if I have anything. I mean, do any of us have something high and like hunt or like 
sneakiness. Um, Alice suggests you. She says, "I'm a pretty good shot with a rifle. If you need anything from me, as far as that's concerned." She's got a nice long Lancaster repeater. Um. Nope. <laughs> Can I do the misfortune thing? Uh, yeah. What in particular would you imagine happening there? I don't know. Like spend two grit to create a major accident. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so uh, th this is one of, uh, uh, as the gamble, which is the archetype that Delaney's playing, so you, you can do sort of, you can make lucky stuff happen. So sure, let's go ahead and spend two grit. Um, and you are going to hear um, down the canyon, uh, first you're going to hear an explosion. Um, there is going to be a, a like puffs of of gray and crimson smoke that that pours up out of it, and you, uh, uh, Matilda, recognize this as a bloodstone explosion. So this is they they particularly had some bloodstone. Something wrong has happened with it, and an explosion has happened. Um, so you hear shouting uh, happening down there. There is it's clear that they these guys are distracted at least for the moment. You're too far to be able to gauge much about their camp at this point. Um, but yeah, th th they are definitely surprised, and this would make it far easier for you to sneak up on them uh, if that's your intent. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, Kaylee's going to, she's going to pull a shotgun off the back of uh, Kirby. Yep. Yep. And uh, Mattel, did you have something you want to say? Sneaking. <laughs> That's it. That's all I was saying. <laughs> Great. Does anyone have points in Prowl? Can we attempt a Prowl roll? Or should, or should someone uh, push themselves, perhaps, to, uh, to sneak a little bit? I'll I don't have any prowl. <laughs> I don't have any prowl either. So you can push yourself by spending two grit to give yourself one die in a um, in an ability, if you would like. Okay. All right, do it. Take the hit. All right, so then roll your one die and let's see how effectively you can avoid detection. Six! Woo! Amazing. So you ascend through the canyon there. You're walking alongside this river. Um, and see, you get you see that there are switchbacks along the northern side of it uh, that lead up to where this explosion happened, to the source of this smoke. There are several tents up there, sort of against the shelf of rock. There are also there are switchbacks that continue even further above that camp and disappear uh, behind the uh, behind the mountainside. You also see further down the canyon beyond where the camp is. So essentially, the camp is on your right up here, and then if you keep going beyond it, you see a makeshift corral, basically like the cattle, the 2000 head of cattle are hanging out here in a little pasture on the side of the river um, and are being sort of held in by a couple of men with firearms and on horseback. Yeah. Um, so you get sense there are people up in the camp. There are the people down by the by the cattle. Um, yeah, that's 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 the, the state of it. Do I see uh, uh, Lily? Um, you don't. You do see the the only structures that appear to exist are the ones in the camp up on the switchbacks. There are several tents up there, including some large ones. These appear to be secessionists, like military, not surplus, but like leftovers from the war. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm the only one down there, right? Uh, your prowl has allowed everyone to join you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You were all you were all there together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You all snuck in. Yeah. <laughs> What do we do now? And <laughs> she's just looking at <laughs> Delilah. Like, yeah. I, I did my part. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, Alice expert. says. <laughs> Alice says, "Look, I, I mean, I think obviously we want we want to get those cattle, but if we could if we could free them in some way, I could sure, certainly drive them out and maybe distract a few of them, get them to go follow the cattle, and then we could head up there, see if Lily's up there." Yeah, that sounds great. I love it. All right. <laughs> um, so she says, all right, so how do, how do we want to deal with these? Because there's uh, four men on horseback next to the sort of guarding the cattle at some distance. She, you guys are within range of, you know, doing whatever you need to with them. But it's like, how do you think we should take them? Should I take a shot? You could do that. Or maybe I could run off, you know, to a run off a ways and I could shoot my pistol so it distracts them and maybe have them come my way and then I'll try to, I don't know, take them out one by one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, maybe if they if they come your way, once their backs are to us, I could take a shot and see if I could knock out a couple. 
Also, uh, with that... Delilah, I don't like the idea of her being there alone. I'll go with uh, you, Alice. Alice looks at looks between Matilda and Delilah and goes, "Well, of course you know." And cocks her gun. <laughs> 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 so uh, you guys uh so kaylee and uh, alice head up a little like hidden behind some rocks in the in in the gorge there um and then uh delilah and um until you head basically to a place where the bend in the canyon hides you from the camp above and uh, you make a shot yeah awesome yeah so you fire your gun to the air um and uh, immediately alice and kaylee you hear um you hear that you see the men like talk, looking at each other, um, and they start riding a little bit closer. Three of them, three of the four, start heading out in that direction on horseback. Um, they once again, you see them. They're not all the figures that you saw, Matilde, um, were almost entirely ash and fire and smoke. Um, these ones are apportioned that way one of them you see his eye is this and the entire like part of his face is just this sort of raw red mess of a tattoo that moves strangely another one has a hand that looks to be made of burning coals constantly and smoke rises from it um they're uh they're sort of hodgepodge uh, mutated things um but they speak in in normal voices um so the three of them start heading your way um and uh, alice uh, goes in to take a shot do you have any sling uh uh, Rebecca okay well let's let's make a roll as well to see how you guys both do with your shots how'd it go one. Oh no one. <laughs> okay so let me see how uh how Alice did okay Alice rolled a five so um you you guys are both there behind the rocks waiting she's sitting there going she, she's just like counting Three, and then turns around, makes a shot, and you see one of the men um, immediately is just struck off his horse and collapses into the river, splashes into the water. Uh, another one gets shot. He's he's uh, he's lifting up his hand, sort of gesturing to the other two horsemen, and the bullet strikes him right in between his index and middle finger. He cries out, looks back in your direction, um, and uh, the men all sort of become confused. The two who are on a horseback who are still alive um, say, looks like some sort of trap and they run back they start running back towards they're now in sh view of matilda and delilah but they are turning and heading back yeah you're gonna make a shot yeah 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 yeah, yeah do your swing do your sling swing your sling oh no oh no how'd it go a two <laughs> oh dang it well. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna get you're gonna some good luck later on <laughs> go ahead what were you i don't do even have have a gun, but I'm just going to start screaming. Oh try and sort of draw them back, distract them. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so uh, you uh, you make your shot, Delilah. It ricochets off the part of the canyon. It goes off nowhere. But one of the men looks back. He's got this um, the, like the full uh, the full neck beard, uh, or just like only there. He uh, he turns back, pulls out his his gun, goes. Poof, and you feel the bullet strike your shin. Um, you are going to take level two harm unless you resist. Oh, I'm resisting. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so you can roll two, is it two or three dice? I think you have three actions in the center column in prowess. Is that right? Let me make sure. Yeah, it's either two or three um, dice. In prowess. Yeah, I've got three. Okay, great. Roll three dice three and then dice. take six grit minus the higher, the highest number you roll. Oh, okay. So uh, how much six, is that? Two great. damage. Yep, two. That's great. So two, you take two grit, uh, lose two grit. So, but you, um, the bullet was coming for your leg, and you just like step right back out of the way, and it strikes the strikes the stones next to you, and you, you know maybe look at uh, Matilda and say, "Oh, that was close," and you wink or whatever the heck you do. Um, <laughs> but uh, the two uh, the two men on horseback continue riding back. Meanwhile, um, uh, Kaylee having. Um, having missed your shot, you know, they got the guy in the hand. Um, they both seem to see you. And then these two men are running back towards the horses. And then you hear the men at the camp up the switchbacks are um, also responding. They, they, they appear to have been mobilized by what's going on up there. Uh, Alice uh, immediately runs out uh, towards the, uh, towards the men, makes another shot. <clears throat> and uh, another one of the men on horseback, the one who had stayed guard the first time gets, you know, <clears throat> 
hits back and slides uh, onto the ground. So you've only got two horsemen left at the cow there. She goes, we got to go. She hops onto Guthrie, who bucks angrily and um, and heads uh, heads off in that direction. Uh, yeah, Kaylee's going to jump on Kirby. I don't know how much so that's going to help me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Kirby is uh, very nervous, but um, trusts you, at least for the moment. Yeah, and she's going to uh, right after um, right after Alice and still awesome. got her shotgun. Amazing. Yeah, she's going to make another shot at the that one. Yeah, of she's going to try. I'm going to use <laughs> yeah. a different dice, though, because that one has betrayed me. <laughs> yes, indeed. Six. Amazing. Yes. So uh, you, uh, you know, you, you, you think for a moment to yourself and you go, oh, you know what? I was trying to shoot that man from distance with a shotgun before. Um, so, oh, yeah, you, that's true. <laughs> so that's getting, getting into closer range, the shotgun has somewhat better effect. Um, so the, uh, the guy with the, uh, the like chin strap who, uh, who shot Delilah um, collapses in a, you know, a mess of blood on his chest and uh, falls back in his horse. Um, the other one uh, is a little bit panicked um, and just sort of fires wildly, pulls out two pistols two, 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 uh, in your direction. Um, what is What are Matilda and Delilah up to at this point? You hear stirring on top of the camp up there. Um, you hear you see that they're knocking out the guys next to the the cattle. What are they? What are you doing? I think heading back towards them. And yeah, can totally. I get another shot in at somebody? Uh, they're a little bit far at this point. You can definitely get on your horse and start riding. Unless you, you were probably on your horse the whole time. Yeah, you, you guys haven't gotten off. I'm thinking the guys who are in the okay. box probably got off horse. Um, but uh, yeah, you, so you're as you're approaching, they're going to get another chance to act. Let's see what happens. Um, okay, so uh, the there is a rain of shots from above. As you as you hear more of these guys who have who have gone up there and say, some more intruders here, and then they say, who the hell are they? Um, and uh, you know, no one knows who's, what's going on. There's some shots. None of them hit you. They're just like splashing into the river alongside you. Um, so you guys are uh, under some fire. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, then uh, you've got you got another shot at this this last guy who's guarding the herd, uh, Kaylee. If you want to take the shot, I will try and take the shot. Awesome. Six. Amazing. Like, not yeah. even kidding. I will show you. Yeah. No, no, I trust you. Yeah. <laughs> It might be a, it might be a this is my shotgun. good dice. <laughs> yeah, good. You're gonna stay right there. So I, don't, I think let's say just for the fun, this is not one of this is not a pump action shotgun. It's one of those where you break it open and like the cartridges fly out just because they're mm -hmm. like, freaking awesome. They're like two shot them. guys. So you, mm -hmm. you shot you shot twice. So the second one just came out. You break it open, funk two more cartridges in there, clank it back up. Boom! Get this guy. Um, he, you know, disappears and falls into the water. Uh, meanwhile, Alice has got the the herd kind of going. Um, so uh, you, uh, Delilah, and Lila, Kaylee, and Matilde realize you're about to be Lion King if you don't get up these switchbacks. Because, um, well, not necessarily, but these these cattle are kind of running in your direction, um, looking ornery and confused. Though, you know, some of them sort of look at Alice like, "Hey, I remember that one." Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, yes, yeah, so there's there's shots coming from up above from a few of these guys. You see a couple of them running down the switch tracks for you. They're wide enough that you could get the horses up those switchbacks if you wanted. Um, but you might want to do something to distract or cover yourselves as you're going up. Either with returning fire or with magic stuff or whatever. You could also, as you, as we, you know, remember, you have items in your inventory. You could throw dynamite. You could do all sorts of crazy stuff. Oh yeah, we have stuff. Well, you've got right? there. Yeah. I think I like nudge. I nudge Matilda. I'm like, do something weird and with your weird vile things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I can, I can be weird. Uh, so I'll, I'll, um, uncork some vials. Love it. Um. And I'll have paint fly up again, but this time instead of it just sort of being abstract up in the air, mm -hmm. yeah, um, it forms sort of a, a face in the air, uh -huh. like yeah. the outline of a face. Ooh, cool. Um, in you know, in the paint, uh, um, and the face sort of smiles broadly, sticks out a tongue. <laughs> and um and then like falls to the ground and creates this kind of slippery surface oh cool yeah Ooh. absolutely let's roll some uh, let's roll craft yeah that's very exciting yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> four okay great yeah so this 
this haze comes up in the air of this strange sort of image of a face and it's a little bit distended and sort of like a face and sort of like a blob and uh, but you know it ends up splashing onto the stuff you of course as you're riding up you ride through that very paint and your and a uh, horse becomes a little bit shaky um as you're doing so so getting up is a little bit a little bit shakier at this this point you're about halfway up the switchbacks now and alice who has started driving the the cattle out into the land is running up uh beside the rest of you and making a couple more shots up uh, onto the canyon's uh ledge some of these guys she knocks one guy who goes Whoa! full wilhelm and falls yes you know, uh, uh, 200 feet uh, uh onto the rocks um, yeah, what else are you guys up to? You're, you're trying to get another halfway up. How are you going to block yourself? You can make some shots at these points. These guys are getting close. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll just make some more shots because that's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it. Yep. Four. Okay, awesome. Yep, so you make another shot at one. Seems to wound him. He He's uh, he's looking all right. Um, a pepper of uh, shots come down at you. You, uh, you uh, get one that's... Uh, the ricochets off of a rock and then strikes you at the t- on the top of your head, scratching your skull a little bit. You take level oh. one harm unless you choose to resist it. It's just a scratch, yeah? It's just a scratch, yep. That'll be fine. Yeah, great. So just write on the harm one, write just a scratch. Just uh, a scratch. On one of those lines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I have two pistols, I guess. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, sure. uh, can I do a couple of... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, boom. Do some slinging. Yeah, let's let's get some shots going up here. And it's two dice, so let's see. Yep, yeah. You got this. Oh no. Hold it too. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> the tension is high. Um, all right, so you, here's what distracts you. You're going up, you're about to like make a bunch of shots here and you see a very tall, um, someone like carved looking face, you know, rather like statuesque face, step out. Um, he's, he pulls back his hat and you see the face of Joshua Ashby. Um, he's got this um, this silver pistol in his hand um, with a bit of blood on the pommel, and um, and he looks down at you all. He looks down and he says, "Delilah Beauregard." You, you you like hear his voice sort of echo like. And you see, as far as the changes that have been wrought on him, he looks pretty similar to before. He's not that. He's like his face is a little bit faded, a little grayer, but mostly his entire left arm looks like the one guy's where it's basically made out of coals. Um, so the other hand is holding the gun, but as he as he says your name, he puts his fist together and it bursts into flames. Um, and uh, he f- flings it out, and the paint that uh, that Matilda's thrown across the thing sets aflame. Um, Kirby rears up and throws you off. Uh, <laughs> so you are thrown to the ground. You don't take any harm, but you are off okay. of your horse. Um, and Delilah, you're still uh, looking up there at, at this guy. Um, he steps a little bit of, a little bit back away from it, um, but you guys are still uh, heading up. You're basically at the top now. There's more tum, tum, bullets running past you as these other ash makers are, are fighting you. What's going on next? I can't um, do anything else because I'll fail. <laughs> <laughs> um... I guess uh, Kaylee's going to stand up and um, how close is is uh, Delilah? Uh, in... She's probably 10 feet ahead of you. You're, so I, I bet it's, I guess it's, who would be first, Delilah or Matilda? Like okay. first coming up, let's say I'm Matilda, kind of Delilah, Kaylee, Alice. Okay. The four of you are heading up the, the switchbacks. So Matilda's nearly there. Um. So Kaylee's gonna, she's uh, she's gonna run up, uh-huh. and uh, with her gun, she's just gonna swing like a bat and just hit the guy in the face with it. She's gonna <laughs> use the, the the shotgun and just crack him across the face. Amazing, amazing. So you're running up really quick, uh, Matilda. You were the first to reach the top. So you see probably a dozen tents here. There's there are two larger tents that are clearly visible, and some stores of bloodstone and other things that they have they have amassed. Um, you see a number of men in front of you. You're on your horse. You've uh, got an easel across your back. Are you going to do something with it? Yeah, um, I'll... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the prompting. Uh, I'll <laughs> grab the easel and try and um, like launch myself off the horse. Heck yes. Swinging with my easel. Amazing. All um, right. And, and is Joshua Ashby the one that's like closest? He's not closest. He's sort of stepped back a little bit, made sure that the others are the fod- the fodder. Yeah. 
I'll swing to whoever is closest. Yeah, great, awesome. Yeah, make your uh, make your brawl roll. Four. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, you guys watch as Matilda like catapults herself off of this little painted <laughs> chair. Sort of lands, boom, like a freaking Avenger uh, on the rocks up here. Pulls off her art easel and boom, bashes somebody across the skull with it. Um, like a, a rain of like ash and smoke comes out of this guy's head as he collapses and falls and is right in between you, uh, Kaylee, and, and Alice. And Alice goes, oh, wow, that's interesting. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, you, uh, yeah, so there, um, another... Um, Another round of shots uh, uh, happens, and you see uh, Ashby go into one of the tents. He is getting away from getting away from you. So, uh, I mean, at least into the one of the tents. So uh, now, so I know the the Kaylee, you were running up. Uh, Delilah, you also would have been up before her. Uh, so, do you, what do you do as uh, as you reach the top and see Matilda do this? I mean, is there a world in which I can shoot at the bloodstone and? create some sort of heck yeah obstacle some sort of uh yeah. thing yeah yeah absolutely yeah you could potentially explode it yeah if you if you hit it the right way okay yeah let's make a shot so that's gonna be a slang we'll see uh yeah we'll see we'll see how it how it treats you we'll see six okay awesome Yay! yeah so uh Hi! yeah you as as Matilda is knocking these out you know getting another one of the guys down there's about five guys left on the on the platform here um you shoot some of the bloodstone and it um, at first, there's this like hissing noise, and then um, it burgeons into this like it like bubbles for a second, as if it's like being blown up in this like strange sort of gelatinous form, and then <laughs> fire and gas and uh, and like ash and pour out of it. Yeah, I, I kind of because I know what happens when I shoot blood. Stuff, Duh, you know. I like kind of tell every. I kind of usher <laughs> everybody like th maybe there's like a rock, and I try to like yeah, yeah get everybody yeah. Get behind the rock or something. Mm -hmm. I say yeah. like pull up your shirt, pull up your shirt. Uh, yeah, you guys get out of the way. So, um, yeah, you, you, you pull up, yeah, get your handkerchiefs over your face. Um, Al and uh, and Kaylee and Alice get up just in time. Uh, let's actually, Kaylee, let's get your shot roll that you were going to make with, well, no, you were, weren't going to shoot, you were going to smack them with the thing. Do you have yeah. brawl or what do you, or disable well, that you're hoping to use? Um, I'll, I'll use disable. So um, what yeah. I was thinking um, was that, yeah, she cut it, ideally, if I roll well, yeah. uh, she's going to just crack someone, a because I guess Ash yeah. got away. So yeah, she's yeah. gonna crack one of the guys across the face and then she's gonna yeah. flip the gun around and then shoot him. Like Excellent. she's gonna knock yeah, him yeah. back a bit and then shoot. Love it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come let's on, do it. Let's get that Five. Amazing, yeah, so you you smack, you know, hold the, the, the barrel in your hand, which is a little bit hot from having shot it twice. Mm -hmm. Boom, smack him. He goes, oh, you little. <laughs> <laughs> Not knocked backward, collapses. Yes. Um, you are then pulled out of the way as Delilah gra yanks you back behind the rock um, <laughs> as this explosion rocks the uh, the plateau. Um, and there is like flame flies past the rock, and you guys are both you guys are all there, sort of breathing <sighs> for a second. Alice, who has been low, she, like she she was able to duck it because she was beneath the the switchback. She comes up, and you see her staring in shock at something. You all come out behind the rock and you see Joshua Ashby standing there with a, some, a person with a hood over their head held in his hand and he's got the gun to her head and says, maybe we can just stop for a second. So the tent has been burned around him. He is like, they're, like his clothes are flaming. Um, and uh, this person, he's like, like just barely knocked out the flames, um, but she's he's holding this person who is who is you know huddled and shaking, and Alice says, "Lily." Um, I think I step forward and I say, "Joshua, let's have a conversation." All right, let's roll a consort and see how you can see how effectively you can convince him. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Oh no, how's it going? Oh my gosh, oh. oh my gosh. So uh, Josh, Joshua says, I think the time for conversation has passed. I'm surprised you would take up with criminals and strange folk and the like. Uh, you know, says the guy with the flaming arm. 
<laughs> so, um, so he, he just like holds her a little bit closer and says, once again, how about you uh, put your weapons down and uh, then uh, everything can be just calmed down a little bit. Um, Kaylee, you are skilled in reading. You have a little bit of a sense of things. You see that there are several figures because you notice there was this plateau and then there were more switchbacks heading up. You see a couple figures, but you can't get a good sense of them. If you attempt to read action, you might be able to get a better sense of who they are. Okay. And I have two in that, so two die? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right, here we yeah. go. Yeah. Make the roll. <laughs> well, uh -huh. one's a one, the other's a five. So yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, okay, I don't add them? <laughs> you don't add them. No, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's the higher roll. Oh, the okay. Higher, the higher roll, you take that. So <laughs> you, see, um, you see a figure who you recognize. You see like the smoking mm. eyes and grayish shape of Elijah Turner. And he is dragging a person behind him who is a girl who matches the description that uh, Alice gave of Lily. Who's the hooded person? <laughs> you, you get the sense that from, from what you can see that this hooded person is maybe not Lily at all. Oh. I'm very confused right now. <laughs> um, before we do anything reckless here, uh, we 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 came for that person over there, and um, who? <laughs> She's just very confused. She was not expecting uh, another person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you, as you look at the body that is shaking. You see Joshua's hand shaking it. You think this might be a corpse that he is trying to f trick you into believing is a hostage. I shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make the, make the roll. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Five. <laughs> Amazing. Yep. He's he's pretty quick on the draw, but so are you. So five is a qu uh, qualified success. So you strike him um, in in the side, and he. Pfft, sort of like shuffles it off this guy's pretty tough and he makes a shot at you um no he actually no he makes a shot at matilda boom, strikes her and she uh you get shot in the you're standing behind the rock you get shot in the shoulder this is gonna be level two harm um unless you resist i will resist okay so if i rolled a six that means that means no no grit yeah you don't lose any grit you just completely yeah yeah. So, how did you resist to getting shot with this gun? Yeah. Um, sorry, I have a I have a mechanics question. My special yes, ability. Yeah. I'm just I'm not sure how it activates. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. snake oil miracle. So when you assist or engage in a group action with someone, they may also ignore one harm penalty. So how oh, cool. exactly does that? Work? Yeah. So basically, um, if you're working alongside somebody with something, which could have worked in this situation, basically, if she had failed to resist or like or had not wanted to resist, you could you could have her ignore one level of harm because you're working on oh, it together. Okay. Okay. So depending on the specific thing. So yeah. Was, okay, was, sorry. No, 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 that's a great, it's a great move. It's really powerful. Um, yeah, cause you're just good at, you know, helping people out with stuff. That's awesome. So, uh, but, uh, but Matilda, you were able to dodge the, the bullet entirely. Um, yeah, so uh, you see uh, um, Joshua is like basically alone. There are like two more guys here are sort of hunkering, uh, but there's a couple who are heading up still towards the, uh, you know, towards whatever, wherever those switchbacks lead. Uh, he's looking pretty desperate. He makes a couple volleys, a couple more shots out of his, out of his revolver. And you actually hear, see the bullets are not regular bullets. They are infused with a reddish uh, quality that when, you know, these are bloodstone bullets so that when they strike the rock, they leave these sort of like poisonous, like, pulsating uh remnants um in the rock um but all of them all of the miss so what are you guys up to um get some cover <laughs> get out of the way of the bullets <laughs> are we aware of what Can uh yeah Kay kaylee kaylee pointed it out to you all so you have seen it and and alice is looking up sort of in confusion and and, and realizing that's where lily is and the police are here no Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. That was me. <laughs> it's all right. Right by the highway. <laughs> yeah, no I worries. We need to to follow if we can. I mean. Yeah, sure. So mm -hmm. you just gotta get past Joshua, or, or yeah. Can I try uh -huh. to get to work again? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What What, no, what do you I, say I to him? Huh? I go like, please, please, Joshua, listen to me. I think some things were left unsaid the last time I saw you, and. 
I need you to hear me out. All right, yeah, let's roll your consort. He's uh, he's definitely willing to hear that. Please, please. Bye. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> um, he, uh, he hesitates. He... And like the, the like the flames coming off of his arms sort of subside for a second. He he walks towards you a couple of steps, and then seems to think better of it. He lifts his pistol, and a bullet strikes his head. And you see Alice holding the gun, <laughs> and, he, and he and he looks at her, and you he looks at her, and as he turns, you see the like the place where the bullet passed through him, and he. Collapses uh, onto the rocks. And I he look is... out and I say, "That was my job." <laughs> <laughs> we just don't have time for that. I'm really sorry, though. Um, and she r- runs, and so so the the switchbacks here are too narrow for uh, for the horses to climb. You'll have to go on foot from here. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, you all follow um, up the uh, up the path towards uh, towards them. Actually, um, if you could. Let's just have, to represent the group's speed, Matilde and Kaylee each roll a d6. And we're just going to take the higher of the two. And this will be just like a fortune roll to see how, how fast Six. you guys. Six, great. And how's yours? Two. Two, okay, yeah, <laughs> great. So um, <laughs> so uh, Alice is sprinting up there. Kaylee, you are as well. And um, the reason that you're a little bit slower, Matilde, is that you are around, you're reaching, you're sort of like hiking up the side of this canyon. And as you come around the corner, you come sort of around this bend and you look up and you see something. This is the mountain. <gasps> you are on the very same mountain where you left your heart. And you are, it's, you're coming at it from a completely different angle and below in the landscape below, what, um, describe for me, what, what does it look like, like from the top of the mountain? Like, what can you see in the landscape below? What does it look like? Oh, um, so like as you're on top of the mountain and you're looking down, uh, there's sorts of, there's a, a forest of trees mm. that are all sorts of different colors. Yeah. Um, but none of the colors trees are typically um, they're sort of teal and pink and yeah um, and then over to the side there's a river that runs through that that the, the way the light affects the river is um, entirely different than the way light typically affects water it kind of sparkles like gemstones but um, mm-hmm. like with like such effervescence um, and I, I realize that this is a landscape I've seen before and I turn back to the mountain and I just can't even move. Yeah, yeah, you're just totally frozen for a moment. Um, Alice runs before in front of all of you heading towards the entrance of this, um, well, to, towards what you see as an entrance. There's a hole in the side of the mountain that might lead into, into some sort of thing. It's wide enough that light passes inside to this cave, just kind of perfectly at this time of day. And um, uh, Kaylee, since you rolled the higher, the higher number, you are like right behind her. And Alice walks, sort of goes, and she lifts her gun, and then a shot strikes her in the throat. Uh, right, right on the side of it, she like immediately reaches up to it and collapses um, onto the ground. Um, and you, uh, and uh, you, um, you hear a voice um, from inside that says, "You should run now." And the voice just like reverberates. And you, uh, Matilde, can hear this. Can hear this voice. This is the same voice that spoke to you um, out on the plains. This is Elijah Turner. Oh, I have conflicted feelings right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, because I imagine uh when Alice got shot, Kaylee, because she was right behind Alice, yes. wasn't she? So yes. she probably caught her in her arms, and she's sure. trying to stem yeah. the bleeding. Yeah. But oh, that's the guy that shot her husband. <laughs> <laughs> she really wants yeah. to get some vengeance on him. Yes. Um, but there's nothing I could do. I'm gonna try this. Um, Kaylee is just going to call out into the sky and she's gonna say, you said you wanted to help, now come through. (laughs) Yes, Yes. great. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, are you going to, you, let's do, if you're going to try and staunch the bleeding a little bit, let's do a read uh, action on okay. that just to see how effectively and quickly you can okay. do that. But you've, okay. you've done this call, so this will be a, a part of whatever happens. Uh, I, six. Okay, great. So yeah, you, uh, you get the sense, you know, immediately get the sense of like, this is a wound that if it goes untreated for another hour, she'll die. But you know exactly like you can do this right now like you can mm -hmm. you can you can manage it um so like you like throw this like bandage on so quick you're like basically you're dragging her to the side so you guys are no longer in the entryway um and uh you you hear so like out on the plains there is this that same red storm and uh after you you shout out to the sky um you hear a little bit of thunder from the storm below but no other answer comes um, mm. and you hear from inside uh the cave um elijah says there's no one coming for you just like there was no one coming for your husband oh okay <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so Delilah, you are now alongside her. You've reached that point, and Matilda, you have you know hearing all this. You know you guys are all out there beside uh, outside the entrance of this cave. Um, can I kind of go to the to the um like kind of like James Bond style? I like go to the edge of the cave, and I want to go in and like just fire some shots because I'm assuming yeah. it, you said it's dark. Maybe I, I can't. Uh, it, there's there's enough light in there. No, there, there's like it's like the sun is just striking inside, so you can see generally. Yeah, but you'd so be silhouetted. Fire. Yeah, Shoot yeah, them. yeah. Oh, in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Pump some blood into it. Five. Yeah, uh, yeah. So um, you step inside, and you know that you're silhouetted with the light, so he likely isn't going to immediately able to immediately get you. You <laughs> let off two shots in there. You see that um, this man with these like you know smoke coming out of both of his eyes is standing there, and there is well you know he's got one gun in his hand and there's a which is smoking from having just shot alice and the other one is pointed at uh lily um who is down on the ground uh, next to him so this is the real hostage situation after the fake hostage situation um uh, but she's lying down on the ground um so he uh you know when you make the two shots one of them strikes the wall one of them uh strikes his shoulder and it like steams and he just shrugs um, and then you uh, slide across to the other the other side of the thing. Um, you see that like he is he is making a show, but it's ash and and you know carbon slide off of him as if off of a burning tree. Um, he is he is not unhurt despite his uh, demeanor. Um, so he, uh, he he's he, so you've switched to the other side um, there. So now you're 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 all sitting there. Um, yeah, what do you guys do next? Do I still have one hair from the spirit buffalo? Yeah, mm -hmm. you do. Um, so I've heard, I've heard Kaylee's cry for help. I um, uncork that. I um, and I've never done this before. Like I've tracked people using paint many times, but I've never mm -hmm. tried to like use other properties. But I am desperate, yeah. and I I sort of am mixing it together really quickly with some some bloodstone paint and um whispering like please 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 and um i i slap it onto sort of kaylee's heart right here and to mm. my own like chest heart right here mm. and i just like please help now <laughs> okay yeah craft yeah craft and like a tune and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well Love i'll it. take it in craft because i have yeah because yeah, you get the both the dice yes uh -huh. Five. Yep. So you uh, you feel uh, Kaylee is strange, like power. It's like this mix of like acid and also just like a feeling of like flying and power uh, come into your chest. It's like your lungs have just filled up more than they can normally, and you just feel this energy and power flowing through you. Um, you hear from inside the cave. Um, he, you hear laughter. Um, from low laughter of Elijah Turner. And then uh, as you turn as if to go into the cave and fight him, he fires the gun at Lily. But uh. you look down and there, and Lily is covered in a haze of sort of bluish energy. 
Um, and as and 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 the, the the bullet does not appear to have struck her, and the and the the energy sort of rises up in the same form of that long haired somewhat uh, l- long haired man um, who stands there and and uh, you know stands against uh, Elijah Turner. He's not doing anything yet, but you guys all have your chance to make some shots. <laughs> okay, what does what does the what is the what is the energy thing? What can I? Uh, you what are did you do uh, to me? <laughs> you are you are empowered. You will have improved effect on your on things that you do. Fantastic. Um. <laughs> I'm going to shoot for that mother of me face. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, do it. And so do I just roll around die? Or... Uh, yes, we're slaying. Or you can push yourself. You can spend two grit to get another die. Pretty good. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's the man who killed my husband. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming it. for him. You're going to take some grit, yeah. I am, and that is a five. <laughs> okay, great. So, uh... He is sort of confused by this moment, um, and you see more swirling shapes of these spirits around him. Like, and they like they latch onto the wall and like grow as vines for a moment, and then disappear and come back as like uh, as birds looking down at him, like just say, shaping into all these different shapes. Um, he looks around, breathing heavily, um, raises his fist and slams into the earth, and it's like it, and the uh, the rocks around you start to shake and crumble, opening up this cave to the to the wall. They fall alongside you, but your your shotgun just goes boom, and he <laughs> is struck backwards. Um, he is uh, he like falls back onto what looks like this sort of stone altar, um, not altar, but this like this little outcropping of stone that um, you know, he falls onto it, and then. <sighs> <sighs> Try again, and he gets, you know, gets a. Uh, oh, comes yeah. a <laughs> All right, <laughs> but he is—I mean, he is just like sh- like shaking and broken, and these clouds are surrounding him. All right, uh, Delilah, you making a shot? I'm gonna do two shots, one at each hand. Okay. Yeah. Great. Mm-hmm. Four. Yeah. Four. Okay. Great. Yep. So um, he uh, he slams his fist into the wall, and like more of these rocks open up until this like this is totally opening up to him. And he uh, he steps forward. <laughs> these things strike him. He is uh, he staggers, and you start to see that these spirits are grabbing around his feet um, and latching onto him and sort of gripping him into place. And he's sort of trying to pull at it, and you see his legs begin to change, and the the ashen. Uh, thing and the sort of charred look on the outside starts turning into bark um and he uh he is like desperately like watching this happen and you know fires uh wildly under your direction but misses um he uh, is slowly consumed by these spirits as they completely transform him until his hands reach up in agony and he blossoms into a uh, a tree with yellow leaves until he is completely gone and the pistol is is trapped inside the wood um and he and all you hear is a single word that rings over the the mountain that says farewell oh that was very helpful (laughs) (laughs) yeah finally they pulled through So, when in doubt, ask the spirits. <laughs> yep. Deus so, ex machina. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh-huh. yep. yeah, he got shot enough times too. That really, that helped them out. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he is now frozen here. Lily is on the ground and and says and says, "Is that, is that Alice?" Um, and uh, Alice is. Uh, is unconscious for the moment, but um, you're able to untie Lily. Um, she is she is bruised and uh, a little beaten, uh, but has uh, not received any worse treatment than that. Um, you is there anything that you do with uh, this tree or with anything that is up here on the mountain at this point? Um, uh, before uh, before I tell Matilda about anything else about the mountain, does anyone else have anything to do? <laughs> Yeah, I want to set that tree on fire. Agreed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, We're absolutely. Burn them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you guys set you set wait, wait, a flame first, about it. Yeah. Go ahead. I want to chisel my initials into it. <laughs> <laughs> you scratch it in. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and, uh, um, uh, sorry, go Kaylee's gonna Kaylee's gonna carve her husband's name into the tree, like right where that his face yeah. was at one point. It's like a knot. You see, like yeah. carves mm-hmm. it into there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you uh, you burn the tree, and it takes about two hours for the whole thing. It's it's you know it's as green as if it's been growing for a long time, um, but it eventually crackles and burns. And you you as in like 
you know those little noises that wood the squeaky noises that wood makes when it's burning you um you feel like you hear cries of pain and agony from this uh this spirit inside that is being burnt <laughs> um, kaylee just uh, kaylee just says burn in hell you sneak <laughs> yep yep yeah <laughs> Yeah, cries out uh, at, at the injustice of what's being done to him, but he, the, the, it's too quiet even for words. Um, and eventually, the thing becomes simply the you know as charred as he was by the time he had um, ended his life. Um, so, uh, the ash maker has been made ash. <laughs> Indeed. <You too>. Um, <laughs> so, um, Matilda. Uh, do you, I, I'm, I'm going to pose this more to you. Do you find anything inside the mountain? Is there a place that the Matilde goes inside the mountain? So I journeyed into sort of the back of the cave. Yeah. There's a very small tunnel. I get on my hands and knees and I start to crawl. Yeah. And I get to the very center of the mountain um, where there is sort of a pulsing glow. And I say, thank you for storing this for me for so long, but I think I need it back. And I enter into the glow. It comes into me. Mm -hmm. I pause for a moment and I crawl my way back into the cave. No. Yeah. And so that, have, did you try to, did, have they noticed you doing this or were you, was this when they were distracted? How did you go about it? Basically, do, are they aware that oh, you've done this? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Concealed. trying to be secret about it, sure. but um, right. it is a small tunnel. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. Are, mm -hmm. are you all right, dearie? I think I am finally all right. I'm glad to hear it. Um, you uh, you step out, uh, Matilda, and look over the the landscape before you, and it is uh, the, the storm has sort of passed on, um, revealing you know that same that same vista was that was with you before uh, that you that you saw on the other time. Some things are just a little too beautiful to try and paint. <laughs> Uh, you eventually are able to make, uh, if you desire, you're able to make your way out of the tear. Um, Alice. Did I get and... my money? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it, uh, on your way. Priorities. My priorities. <laughs> yeah. On your way, you get down to the, the the burned remnants of the camp, which you had burned to ash, and which uh, had several metal strong boxes. Um, which uh, were, were very hot to the touch and you kept for some, you waited for some time. You actually brought up some pails of water to cool them down, opened them up and found a lot of this money inside. Some of it had melted into the metal because of the heat of those flames, but um, not enough to cause any significant dent in the uh, monetary value. Um, <laughs> you, uh, you're able to get enough money for everybody that uh, everybody involved gets, uh, gets, well, Matilda and Delilah and Alice get two coin and four is left for uh, for Kaylee and her son's uh, journey back um, to their home. So uh, you, uh, you know, coin being a term for a larger amount of money, not single coins. Like you get two pennies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, you have this. Yeah, you eventually descend from the from the place. The cattle have been found as well, and. Um, uh, exhaustedly, um, uh, Lily and Lily and Alice lead you back, lead them back, uh, and you head back to uh, Kaylee's ranch. Uh, Alice gets better in the next couple of days. Lily appears to be getting better as well, and they thank you profusely for your help and uh, sort of head on their way. Um, but is there anything else that you guys do before that ending happens, or anything that you do in the tear or otherwise? I. <laughs> I think I, I think I go up to Matilda and I literally just like, as much as I can, dip her and kiss her. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you know, like fire your gun into the air as you dip. <laughs> and she's, you know, she's six five, so it's sort of like a, kissing a broom. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yep. 
Yeah, you get one out <laughs> out in the near the river at the bottom. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful little moment. Yeah, you guys might, uh, you know, wherever you guys end up, you uh, spend a little time together, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, uh, that's wonderful. Any anything else that happens with the rest of you? Yeah. Uh, no, I think I think Kaylee's just just ready to get her son and get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> yeah, you get back to the White Lake tribe and. Um, and Jack says, Mother, I didn't bathe the whole time and I didn't become a reptile at all. She promised me. She promised me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that. It would have been a wonderful tale to have a, a little toad for a son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, White Lake tribe graciously uh, lets, uh, lets him back to you. Um, uh, yeah. And I, I give them some coins as thank you for watching him because I'm yes. sure they could use it in some way yes, or another. Yeah, they're, they're very thankful for it. Worth uh, useful for trading at the at Fort Willimon. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Anything else that Mathilde does in the tear? Um, I don't think in the tear, but okay. I imagine we've we've sort of gathered back yeah. at Kaylee's house. Mm-hmm. We're we're sort of you know Alice is healing. We're sort of about to go our separate ways. Yeah. Matilde says, I normally don't ask, but I'm, I think maybe I should ask if it's okay. I could take one hair from each of you and then um, perhaps we'd meet again. I'd love that. <laughs> gonna pluck so a hair. I collect all their hairs. Yeah, and then Jack I turn... gives you about five hairs. He's very excited. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> um, and then I'll turn, you know, to Delilah and say, and then um, maybe some ale and some lemon and something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, and you guys spend your your last evening together, uh, just you know, in a in a state of having achieved what you uh what you came to do the uh you have now a fistful not only of vengeance but of uh some money and uh and hair. uh some people's hair yep <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and there's little more that one can hope for from an adventure in the west <laughs> well folks that concludes our uh our show fistful of vengeance thank you very much for your uh uh, attendance here and your uh, attention and your great enthusiasm in the chat has been great to see um thank you all for your time thank you so much to all of you for your involvement thank you to rebecca for making this wonderful art to emily for writing that intro music uh, and to everyone else for uh, uh, at, at ghost rpgs for the incredible work they put into making this channel possible um, i believe that we will be raiding another channel which means that there's another channel that is um doing things on twitch right now and we will send all of you viewers there you just have to stay put and this car will go there and drop you off so just you know <laughs> We, we are there, you know, if are, the answer to are we there yet is we will be there in a second. So we will be watching a little bit more. Feel free to comment enthusiastically upon their work uh, if you enjoy it. And um, yeah, until uh, until Sunday, Sunday will be, uh, I believe, um, Temple of the Frog. Um, and then there will be more adventures coming very shortly on Ghostlight RPGs. Uh, thank you very much and have a wonderful evening.